Right? And that's the week that Blue Fairy's character dies. <laughs> like, for real? You couldn't fucking, like, wait a fucking week? <laughs> she couldn't really help it, though. <laughs> I mean... Dojo, uh, uh, Krista pointed out that, the, that, that last week, um, I had made a joke about killing Pluto Fairy earlier that session. Really? Yeah, I was, because I, I said, if she survives, right? Oh. Uh, and then, uh, like, there were a couple of things that just, like, foreshadowed the death. That, of course, we had no idea, because the death was just the dice, right? Right. I messed up. Oh, that was a fucking shocker. How'd you mess up? <laughs> I meant to go get ice, right? What did you get? Well, I meant to go, I, I meant to bring a jar with me so I could load it up with ice. But I forgot it and realized when I got up there. Oh well, fuck, I didn't get my card. What? So you came back to sit down and tell us this story instead of just grabbing your jar, going to get ice, coming back and acting like nothing happened. Until we got his ice with him now, bro. You grabbed the entire ice. <laughs> <laughs> He's your friend. <laughs> Kid's practically my fucking brother. Uh, it's, it's the truth. <laughs> what up, Serranus? How's it going? Hi, Serranus. Man, we're gonna have so much fun today, you guys. It's gonna be like, it's gonna be like Mr. Rogers on that segment with Picture Picture. Oh, what? God. Yeah, you know, where he takes people Why'd like, you have to mention Mr. Rogers? Now I'm sad. Uh, I don't know I why. Like how Optical is making a sad face he's right now, even dead. though he's on stream. What's wrong with that? Hey, Matt, you he got something on your, uh, on your neck. I think it's called my head. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Not sure I can. You <laughs> pop that. Not, not much we need to fix that. that. Sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna pop it. No, I don't think that's Man, I wish I could find a Vampire in the Requiem game that was actually interesting. Yeah, that'd Take be one. You can do that. I could, I could. Tough though. Screech is like the natural DM. Like, he even DMs the D&D game that he shouldn't. I know, right? <laughs> did you read the, did you read the chat? Uh, that we started. Oh, I need, I need to actually sit down and go through the entire thing. I read, like, the beginning. Yeah. Uh, 
and like essentially your first concerns, but I had to read through the whole thing. And it, it, dude, I like I woke up and I looked and it said four hundred some odd messages, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot of messages. <coughs> well, yeah, it was. Uh, it, I'm playing. I'm playing Aubrey. Yeah, in, uh, in the D and D game, and uh, it uh, because I'm playing Aubrey. Aubrey, we you know the questions of what is good and evil came up as they are wont to do in every game where somebody is properly playing a paladin. And uh, just want to get some rules clarification. For me. The record, the whole party is racist. And that's amazing. Which party? The, the D and D party? Yeah, dude, everybody's racist. racist. How? Like racist against elves or racist against, against goblins. black people? Against oh, goblins. goblins. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Actually, see, okay. You know it's funny because you know we had that whole discussion on like the D&D characters, like that whole talk show. Yeah, yeah. And I started thinking about this the other day. Is that the way? Okay, so I'm as a person, I am a strong believer that your experiences and your choices in the past like affect who you are today. Yeah, it's right. Hard not to think that. Um, they are what form you into who you are. Well, when it comes to characters. I don't form a backstory until after those decisions. I do it in yeah. the, a complete opposite way. Yep. So. It's cool. I believe that too. The actions of my future self form who I am today. It's only because you're in a canthus. Stop being French. <laughs> Run through during a boss fight. It was sad. Like so. It, it so. fit right with the tradition where, like, when I do, when I am playing games where PC death is a real possibility, uh, typically I'll tell the players at the start of a boss fight, "All right, guys, gloves are off this time. If you die, you die." And I do that to like ramp the tension of the boss fight. She just happened to die during a boss fight. I wasn't even gonna kill her until. Uh, yeah, you like, didn't the, say that even. Yeah, no, like, it, uh, cause I, I wasn't planning on killing, uh, killing Tanya. Hey, uh, shift stick, what's up? Shift uh, stick. Yeah, I was. I wasn't planning. I was, the cool part was I wasn't planning on killing Tanya until like she and I like looked at each other over the net, and I instantly understood she wanted to kill Tanya there. Right? She wanted to play that out, and she was cool with that. Uh, and so I, I rolled with it, and this is what happened. And now, Jack will never be the same. Yep. Jack's fucked up. Nothing will ever be the same. Nothing will ever be the same. I can't wait until you guys find out next week who Pluto Fairy's new character is going to be. <laughs> I know. I wish I knew what it was already. I'm dying of anticipation. Uh, it keeps coming back to haunt me. What did Pluto come very come back as? And nobody can see your face right now, Jack. By Jack, I mean Matt. <laughs> you can see my face. That's good I, enough. All right. So the rest gonna... of you can just imagine it. They've seen it before. It's all the same. Yeah, it's still <laughs> ugly. See. Someone do something awesome during the show? Shout beat in all caps to show your support. Yay! Has anyone seen an evil dog? No? What of a bitch. Jack is really looking for an evil dog. Aw, <laughs> oh, damn, you're ahead of the stream. Faith, prudence, he's lying. Hope, fortitude, <laughs> I know he's lying. justice, charity, temperance. What about wrath, envy, pride, greed, lust, gluttony, and sloth? Yeah, that's right. Obviously, Levi just needs a hug. From someone who isn't Jack. <laughs> I don't think Jack's ever tried to give Levi a hug. The city is populated with businesses like Hipsters, McBurger Queen, Stuff Mart, Graphite Airplane, and Oogles of Maps. You can read reviews of all of these brands on Welp. How, does, how do you spell Graphite Airplane? It's on the stream. Dungeons yeah, & Damsels memberships save lives. Up. No, really, they do. Stop laughing at Levi. An antiquarian is someone who can hulk out and accidentally hurt people. Obviously. Oh, 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 no, I didn't mean to do that. That was messing with time. <laughs> this game is brought to you by... I wanted to listen to the music, but realized I was actually getting an overlap. The viewers! Here. You guys deserve a beat. Ooh. Jack will pay you back. No, really, stop laughing. <laughs> they will! They will! We haven't See. confirmed if Jack is hallucinating this book or not. He won't let us. 
Every time Graphite Airplane has been mentioned, I've spelled it like this, deliberately, putting it in Graphite. In graphite! Axel Omega is only one officer from the 13th Precinct, but he's the I, officer this city needs. Then, kind then of. Grant goes and ruins my spelling and makes a different spelling canon instead. Levi has a long building hatred of cars. Seriously. Fuck cars. I have no problem with cars, That's unless why. You're a they liar. try and kill me. Stripping is a combat maneuver, brought to you by Tanya Louder. Angel if Pope. cars stopped trying to kill me, then I wouldn't have any problems with them. But they keep trying, so we're gonna have problems. Fan theories are encouraged. Backseat gaming is not. <laughs> That's right. Stay out of the cars. Tanya had rolled to kick him in the nuts, do sex good, and rip off clothes. There aren't rules for this shit. God damn it, I gotta change the loading tips because Tanya's dead. Fuck! Yep. Ah! That's what you get! Cassie Omega versus Batman. I should we still haven't myself. decided. I just toss up to Oh my god, I just had an idea. Who the very had a crush on Tanya? Don't tell her we told you though. It's a secret. A weird, creepy secret. That's really disturbing now that I think about it. An officer's promise is like a pinky promise, but with more guns. To date, Tanya Louder, aka Lucky, is the only one to get lucky, or take a shower, or die. <laughs> Where's your luck now? <laughs> only Tanya. God damn it! She's dead! I get it, game! She's dead! Stop talking about her! She's never coming back! Oh gosh! <laughs> the 13th Precinct is proud to be home to Officer Omega. Even if the other cops call oh, him, hold behind his back. I like to Purge me! Quick! The way, quick! Yeah. Purge me! When, 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 when Levi... Levi... <laughs> he didn't say anything. Oh, okay, good. It didn't show up. Yeah. When, when, I like to imagine that when Levi hulks I'm out, it remember. also cleans him. I mean, he regenerates all his wounds, so it's like he's brand spanking new anyways. And he hulks out more than once a day, so that's like taking multiple showers. At the rate he's going. Just saying. <laughs> yes! That would be fantastic. Alright, so I need you guys to fall real quiet because we're going to do the show opening thing. Oh, I was going to say the answer is yes, but you said we don't know yet. Oh, stay quiet. Right, and then I gotta unmute you assholes because because of you assholes. Hey, I I muted myself. Fuck you. Yeah, that's a nice play. I didn't even need to mute. I just stayed silent. No, you didn't. You still made noises. One of these days. Okay, one of I these laughed days, once. 
well, one of these days you're gonna like do that, right? And then like a car accident's gonna happen like through your wall. <laughs> Uh, if that okay. happens, I'm asking where the hell. Ah, oh. the car. It'd be impressive considering I live in a basement. Yep, Golden Llama. Pluto Fairy's character died last week. Sorry. I'm dead. Tried we, to uh, save her. We did. Uh, we haven't finished trying to save her either. Like, I don't know. It's true. Like, if it's by true. some wild stretch of the imagination, like something happens where Tanya could come back, like I'll I'll poke Pluto and be like, hey, this, right? I don't I don't see that happening though. Uh so uh Last week on Darkness Rising. The uh a <laughs> party of chosen ones arrived at the museum and had begun exploring. They found the museum to be corrupted, the, the location to be exceedingly tainted, cold, dark, and riddled with unnatural phenomena. Uh, they explored the city block, found their way into the museum, and managed to survive all the way until the very end where they were confronted with a person possessed by a darkness demon um, from whence the darkness emanated. Uh, the it was another waitress at the diner, uh, Alicia's. Uh, it it turned out that Alicia's <coughs> suitor was a uh, was a, was a was another woman, uh, and it didn't work out too well. Let's say, and then from there, uh, when they confronted the demon possessed katana wielding katana cop, uh, it didn't go well for Tanya. Uh, Tanya was run through with the katana fatally, and on her way out managed to, uh, rip katana cop's throat out, um, with her teeth, because at the time, uh, Tanya had been cursed with cannibalistic urges. Um, after being married for so long, you just take the automatic one success oh and stop trying for exceptional. Thank you for the follow, Hulkmania Final Fantasy XIV. Um... From I think his there, are confused. Uh, at the at the very end of the last session, <clears throat> uh, after after Tanya Lauder's death, uh, a hulked out Levi Waterhouse, um, oh my god, made with a hell of a lot of violence all up on that bitch's face, and some shots from uh, and some shots from Axel managed to finally do her end, or one way or the other. The point is, uh, Katana Cop. Unquote, the demon-possessed waitress who was wielding a katana with the word justice engraved on its side. Uh. Oh! That... What? What happened to that katana? You don't know. You blacked out, oh. remember? Oh. Um. I, I forgot, actually. <laughs> uh, Jack, in his desperation, having seen, uh, having seen Tanya, Tanya's death, uh, called upon the power of his last remaining leaf did a dance, said a prayer, and crossed over into the Leafling's world. Uh, crying out it with his mind for, uh, for the blind man, his fey guide. However, uh, when he landed there, uh, not only did he fail to bring Tanya Louder with him, which was his intention, uh, but he doesn't know where he is, and he's not in a familiar part of the Leafling's world, if he's even in that world at all. Meanwhile, Axel stayed behind with an unconscious Levi and a dead Tanya and a wounded Alicia. Uh, and that's where we're gonna pick up. And I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the audience I'm gonna let the audience decide which one of these two scenes we start the session with. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna run a I'm gonna run a vote. Don't vote yet. Okay, I'm gonna run a uh we're gonna run a, uh, okay, we're gonna run a, a, a poll, all right? And we're gonna, we're gonna start, we're gonna give two minutes to this here. Vote, people! And boom. <coughs> My ice cubes are melting. I can get them in the drink. 
All right. While the audience is voting on uh, what scene they want to start today's show off with, uh, Serratus, what are the rules for the depressed condition? Specifically. Uh, Levi, if you could look that up for me as well. I know there's a condition for it in one of the books. Probably in the GC... Uh, the, the, the GMC dog. conversion? Yeah, probably. Yeah, GMC, uh, GMC update. Just regular straight up de depression. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hold on. What? Is it going to be close? It's 50-50. Dang, people, come on. Break the tie. Oh. Somebody voted 99. I see that shit. That doesn't help, though. They already voted. Uh, you know what? Depression isn't in here. Uh, Well, Serranus is getting the rules for us, so... There might be something similar, though. Obsession. Well, <laughs> there is obsession, yes. Yeah, that's interesting. Depression isn't in that uh, set. Okay, so after after we do these two scenes, uh, I'm gonna talk uh, with with Jack. I know Jack. You and I went over. Uh, you and I went over some ch some character changes to your sheet between sessions. Really? <laughs> He's looking at something. I think you're muted, Jack. Is sorry, roommate. Like, oh. oh, okay. Yeah, I was like streaming rules. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I know them feels. Uh, yeah. you, were, you were looking at you. You were looking past the camera, like. Yeah, I was like, is no, he yeah, watching yeah, porn? I, like, what's he I'm doing? I'm looking up at my door, but uh, like, I'm looking above my camera, but my camera, I guess, picks it up like I'm looking at my camera. Sorry. Yeah, you were like looking at the camera, kind of like nodding and like making motions to your mouth. I was like, this has got to be porn. He has to be watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. Winning man. option was Jack. Unsurprising. Uh, Jack, those changes that we talked about will go through after we're done with this play, all right? And then we'll go over the changes so the audience can familiarize themselves with the stuff that we Oh, have. fuck. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm hoping I can remember the changes. Like, well, I well, know what we changed and what we changed to. Yep. But we'll I can't... I, we'll hash I'm it. I'm hoping out. I can remember what it was. I think I do. Because yeah, we only okay. changed, like, two things. So, Jack, um, we were trying to drag the, the corpse of Tanya Louder through the barrier between worlds. Yeah. Uh, and when you arrived, you found that she was <laughs> not, to be, not to be found... You, 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 you noted a distinct heat where you were, and there was a rough, scraping stone floor. Yeah. Uh, now, did we, did we talk about how that bears the burden would ping, or no? I don't think we did. Okay. I don't remember if it actually did ping or not, but oh well. I've got the notes from last session, because we gave out okay. XP for that, so. So, I have a question. Um, do we get to know the changes that were made to Jack's sheet? Yes, uh, after this. Yeah, after, after. this. Yeah, okay. we're, we're talking all the stuff because this was a, hu a hugely traumatic experience and I believe fully in character development. Cool. And so some, some stuff might change as a result of a PC's death. Holy shit. Um, yeah. no, that never well, happens. Not, well, not dies, only that. You just get a replacement and call it a day. Not, okay. not only that, but Jack's whole, like, I even think without the, the, like, the PC death, like, I think there were going to be some things that were changing anyway because yeah. of the way Jack has been developing lately. So, uh, you're that you fall onto your hands and knees, and the the stone. It's like, despite the fact that there is no light, the the stone beneath your beneath your hands and and through the like the scraped knees of your jeans. It's it's got that like sunlight baked tarmac feel, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's a little smoother than tarmac, and it's uh, like less. It's not it like smoother in texture, and it's not evenly spread, and you can't really see. Is there any light anywhere? It's not pitch black, but you can't see anything beyond just like silhouettes and shapes. The light doesn't seem to be coming from any specific place. Okay. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and pull out my phone and, like, turn on the flashlight app. All right, you turn on the flashlight app, you start looking around, and the uh, the stone underneath your feet as you stand up is actually uh, probably what what used to be molten, molten rock. 
Um, this is awesome. And, uh, and, and you know, it's that black char, and there's you realize the light, what little light there is, is actually coming from underneath the floor, right? That soft, tiny orange hint of uh, of color. Um, oh, this is great. The uh, the 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 cavern that you're in, uh, is is a dead end. There's only one way in or out, and it's directly right. ahead of you. The uh, the, 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 the walls of the cavern are stacked, uh, mixtures of stone of more of this molten, melted rock, right? And, and, and what appear to be human skulls, uh, kind of like staring out of the walls at you. Well, I'm bolting the fuck out of here. <laughs> didn't, you say, didn't you say he had two left hands too? Yeah, yeah, you have two left hands now. Yeah, yeah. I said that last week. Yep, that yeah. was what we left off. You're like a half rock shasa. What the? Except not as cool. Stop talking. <laughs> it's a D and D reference. I thought stop. everybody here would get it. Just stop, stop it. Just stop. <laughs> Nobody asked you. Okay. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> Your speaking privileges have been revoked for the next ten minutes. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, so, so, so you you start bolting and you run out. Um. And and just up ahead, right, you sense a motion in the darkness as you start running. Like a fluttering kind of shape just darts past just the edge of your vision. It's Batman's yeah, I'm cape. I'm still going. Um, all right. Give me a dex. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Dex athletics check. Oh, damn it. Hmm. One success. One success. All right. Uh, I'm checking to see if my book is here. I didn't expect to need it. I'd actually need it. Oh, no, don't. Gone. Diddly is that? I'm not telling you. That telling might... me what? I'm not telling you anything. Oh, hey. <laughs> not only wearing a blue sheet. Blue sheet. Yeah, he's wearing a toga, folks. Oh, no. Yep, it's a sheet, Sorry. guys. <laughs> it's not just a blue shirt. He's I'm actually blue wearing sheet. pants today. Uh... <laughs> That is not allowed. You take those pants off right now, sir. I am, I am wearing pants in honor in honor of Tanya Louder. Right. That is who not never, allowed. You take those never, pants off right now. <laughs> Tanya Louder, who never got around to wearing any. <laughs> okay, so so I need to uh yeah I need to grab my book real quick. Hold on, I can't kill Jack without the book. Um. So as you are. Uh, yeah, you'll have more luck in the VTR second. As you are escaping the dark and melty caves of Skullborn, creepy staring, <laughs> you sense in the darkness beyond you a moving silhouette, and you ignore it. I saw that. It. That's the spirit book. I recognize it by the cover. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope, you're wrong. I'm not wrong. You're totally wrong. Uh, no. Fuck you. So, <laughs> it's funny, because you said you didn't expect this. Yeah, what the hell else is Jack supposed to do? I know, right? I uh, can't get out. Like, I can't leave, because I don't have any leaves. And he showed up in a rock cavern, so he can't get any more. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to either make a huge mess, or successfully finish uh, off the ice. Okay, no, I don't want to do that to you. This is how he keeps you in suspense. Okay, no, I know oh, what I'm doing to you. Pages, he pages through the book and does that, yeah. Okay. okay, so, Jack, um, you start, you start running, and, uh, a, a huge, uh, a, a huge hulking, Bam. as you look over your shoulder, because you hear the, the, you feel the gush of, of hot, dry, dead air rushing past you from behind, and you hear the solid, loud uh, flap of huge leathery wings. Because Batman. Uh, and you look over yourself and uh, you, look you look over your shoulder and you s catch just a glimpse there's a giant eyeball with with with, uh, with it's like it's rotten in places you can you can see the like the black uh, dead flesh uh, as it locks its eyes on you and it's and it's darting at you you look over and you just barely roll out of the way and and take off running again because you don't have any means of defense with you right now and it right. scratches your shoulder 
Uh, they'll take a point of bashing damage. It'll heal up in a little while. So you're running out of the... You're running out of this cave. And the... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm now at <laughs> I have one point of like each type of damage. <laughs> My health bar says alb. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, so you you start you, you're running and you're running and you're running and the the cave starts to close in around you. It starts to get more claustrophobic and the, there's just a crack of light up in the distance and you start really hauling ass and this thing is screeching as it's diving at you. You keep ducking out of the way and you you have to turn sideways and throw yourself and you get stuck in the mouth of the cave. Just a second and it slams into you in a frantic attempt to like bite you or or or, or it pushes scratch. me out instead. and it pushes you out instead and you wind up falling uh onto a street uh, like a concrete city street oh, fuck this is not where i want to be uh and it, and it, and it's it's the the, the sky above <laughs> you is storming and 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 the, the like the clouds are rumbling uh, and, and the, uh, the, the, of the, all the buildings surrounding you, like, most of them, they're just, like, hazy, they're, like, representations of buildings, they're not actual buildings, except for the one just down the way, uh, which is writhing, and you can see, like, tentacles crawling in and out of its windows, and it seems to be freezing, like, it's actually snowing, um, I am or not you, going near that building right now. <laughs> <laughs> or you could go in the opposite direction and find out what's down the street. Yeah, we're going that way. <laughs> All right. More tentacles. <laughs> I've seen horror. Okay, Jack has seen horror movies. You don't go towards the bad shit. Um. So, uh, you're you're headed down the road, and and you see a uh, like the, the 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 streets here. You almost recognize them. This is almost this is almost the city. You know the, where you guys are from, but the streets are wrong. Some of them are backwards. Buildings are on the wrong sides of the street. Uh, there's no sign of life anywhere to be seen. Uh, where is it that you start trying to navigate yourself to in this weird, twisted mirror of your of your hometown? Um, I don't even know. What about the... I think I think at this point, like Jack wouldn't even know because his whole pro, like his whole point for coming here, is gone. Like, what about uh, what? Why don't you ask the book? I mean, yeah, he could. I, I don't think he would think about that. Like personally, like in my mind, like Jack uh, is just kind of like he's, okay, he's, he's too frantic. Like, he's, he's not. He's not. Like, yeah, he's like he's defeated. Like he's he's like my whole point for coming to this place is not here. Like he's like I see Jack literally just stopping and sitting on the road. Okay. Um, and just kind of like going through everything, like why, why, like he's just defeated, like at this okay. point, like, just like everything is, everything did not go how he wanted. It wasn't what he meant to happen. It's did Serranus post the the depressed rules while I wasn't there? No. Okay. She uh, is, or he or she is still looking. I think. Okay. Oh yeah, all he said is a lot of the new conditions are actually labeled. Yeah, yeah uh, blood and order. blood and smoke has a lot of the new ones. Um. Uh, okay, so. Uh, you sit down, and, and like, you, there's just, you can't handle it. There's nothing to be done, there's nothing yeah. to do, right? And, uh, and as you sit there and you, and you, you are overwhelmed with this emotion. And, like, that's the thing is, like, Jack, this is, like, the first time that Jack has experienced this, because he's always had a way out. Like, that was his, his thing, was, yep. leave yourself out, so he's always had a way out, and at this point, he just, he doesn't see one. Uh, so you know you, the the hopelessness of your situation kind of sinks in, and and the, like as you're sitting there, like you don't notice it until it until it's already started to happen, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You're not crying, but the but the pavement like between your feet as you're sitting on the curb, right, starts to be sprinkled with tears. Um, the uh, the uh. On your clicking, there we go. Uh, you're not crying, but you're, but you, but the the, the street beneath, between your feet is, is sprinkling with your tears, and 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 the the area starts to lose color, and everything starts to become this soft shade of blue. 
and you start to hear a soft crying echoing down the road, and it's coming in your direction. Yeah, I don't... I... <laughs> Does he sit there? Jack really like... wouldn't... Yeah, he, like, yeah okay. seriously, he is to the point right now where, like, he doesn't care what happens to him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's almost, like, he's given up. He has nothing to, to, to like, to fight for. Like, because, like, before, you know, it was either... It was always for somebody else. He's yep. never fought for himself. He was always fighting for somebody else. And his his fight is done with. Like he and there's nobody there to tell him it's okay. Keep moving. You know, you can do this. But Um, okay, so so this uh the the as 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 you're just sitting there like like completely without drive, without anything left, it's all gone. Uh yeah. that the weeping gets louder, the weeping gets louder in a in a in a in a in a, in a, 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 a humanoid shape. It's Kind of like a a a, 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 a twisted or, or or caricaturized uh depiction of a woman uh kind of shambles up into view and she is wailing and 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 crying and her face is is perpetually drenched in tears so much such that like the 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 the, the, the tear streaks have actually dug ruts into her cheeks um and and, and eroded her physical being. Ew. Uh, and she shambles up and the sound of her voice actually grabs that emotion you're experiencing and intensifies it. And so where you've given up and you've and you've stopped and you've given up hope, imagine that overwhelming multiplying and crushing you. Uh and she's about to lay her hand on your head and her hand like it's got a mouth in the palm that you don't notice until by the time like you really don't care you are so dark and so lost that you're just looking up without like there's no survival left like you've, yeah. you've truly and wholly given up and she is about to consume you when a really loud and and sudden uh gunshot rings out from not too far behind you and and so she's looking at you Right, and she's coming right. down on you, and then all of a sudden, like this, her <clears throat> entire body just rockets in that direction. Blood. Oh wait, no, that's not blood. Those are tears, bursting from her flesh as as buckshot tears the entire upper half of her body physically and forcibly yanks it away from you, and sends it splattering all over the street. And then, boom! You hear it again. Boom! You hear it again. And by the time this guy is done blasting the shit out of this out of this this thing, right? You finally see him stepping out of the shadows. At first, you see a buckled boot with the steel toes on the outside of the black leather, rather than the un rather than inside them. Then you see the torn jeans, yeah, the the graphite airplane T-shirt, and then the <laughs> dual and then the dual the dual hair the dual colored hair splits through, and Punk steps around the corner. Hey. And he kind of like looks at you for a second. He says, "You're new here, ain't you?" Yeah, I've never been to this one. Where were you trying to get? Uh, I don't know, Leafland. I don't know what it's called. The Glade. I guess. He says, "Yeah, Glade's more in the direction of the hipsters over by short bushes." Oh. Like I'm still not moving. <laughs> and like, like at this point, like, like there's no point. <laughs> what happened? It looked like you done got chewed up and spit out. Yeah, you could say that. Let's just say shit hit the fan, and the whole reason I even came here is not here anymore. There's no point. No point in anything anymore. Oh, you're depressed. Yeah, you could say that. That's one way to put it. <laughs> He'll sit down, right? He kind of sits down next to you. He throws the shotgun back, oh, back in its sling over his chest. Right? He says, forgive me if I'm assuming too much here, right? Was she hot? Yeah. <laughs>
puts his hands behind his head. He says, "Well, she was. She's dead now. I've lost a few." Yeah. I knew a girl. I don't know if it's worse or not. She was a good kid. Fell in with the wrong crowd. She's not dead. She's one of them now. Hmm. Found some religious crap, I guess. <laughs> He kind of runs over. He says, "Look, you did good. You hunted down KC and you handled it. To be honest with you, it's not much you could have done to save any of the people that died." So, props to you. I let you live. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do this one. I let you live. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is a uh, prop to you. You live. I mean, it sucks. You gonna let this happen to the next one? I can't. It should have happened to this one. Well, it will if you don't get up off your ass. Yeah, but it... What am I to do? Like, I've already, I've failed. Like, I can't. You failed once. It's not an all or nothing game, kid. You don't one shot I shouldn't the boss. have let it happen in the first place. Like, that's the problem is. Well, no, you're right. You shouldn't have. Like, I'm not going to pat you in the back and tell you it's all great and that you did fine when obviously you done fucked up and she's dead. Yeah, like, that's the problem is, is like, you know. I have to ask for so much for myself, and I can't even protect those I care about. Well, you got two options. Protect harder or care less. One of those two options lets you live. He offers you his hand. I'll take it. He pulls you up off your feet, right? He says, I lied. Nobody calls me punk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so then what is your name? This is, as far as anybody else that you're ever going to interact with knows, you can call me Wrath. Oh. Hmm. The family business, dealing with people with Perks. I can see that. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do here? I, this is, I'm at a loss, man. Well, for one, it's fucking dangerous as shit out here. Yeah, I can tell that. Why don't we get you down to the glade? You do whatever your business was if you can, and if not, we get you home. Sounds good to me. And he'll, uh, he'll kind of, like, pull out a map. It, and he, like, it's, it's, it's scrawled on, like, old-school parchment, right? Like, right. he pulled this out of a fantasy game, not a, not a modern one, right? <laughs> and you look, you look over the shoulder, and, like, the streets are, are at, uh, you can see the street moving, and some of the names, and, like, and, 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 like, you can actually see the, like, the little scrawling of the, of the, the tentacled building that you avoided. Has mm -hmm. just a, just like little little notes like somebody doodled little like tentacles there, right? The tentacles are actually just changing every now and then. Like the map is constantly updating with the ever shifting landscape. Hmm. And uh and he says, uh Yeah, glades off this way. Come on. He'll pack the map into his pocket and Yeah, I'll follow him. So he uh, he'll he'll bring you eventually to the glade, and it, it, it's jarring around the uh, the short bushes community. Loosely, I mean, it's not exact, but in that general area, like the 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 the, the underbrush starts to really grow out, and you can actually start to see a forest building. Uh, and there's the river. 
that runs through the glade. Uh, and he'll, uh, he'll stop at the edge. Wrath stops at the edge of the glade, and, and he'll pat you on the back. He says, this is as far as I go. Uh, your buddy's in there, and I don't see eye to eye, so... I get the feeling you don't see eye to eye with a lot of people. It's not really part of the business. <laughs> well, thanks, man. Um... I'm assuming I'll come across who you have that back there at some point. This, oh, you mean? Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 cross paths again. We have uh, really similar interests, you and I. All right. Um. Why'd I recommend packing a gun next time? <laughs> yeah, I don't really use those. Find something. Yeah. Walk softly, kiddo. Yep. And he'll turn and start headed back into the city. Um. I'm. God. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to lean over and take a drink of this water. Like, at this point, it's just water to me. Like, I'm just thirsty as shit. Yeah. I've been through a lot and me, I want water. Give me, a, give me a willpower check. Uh oh, that's nothing. I have no willpower. Uh, oh, willpower is not, isn't something you roll at current. It's something you roll at max. Oh, okay. it doesn't matter how many willpower so points you spend. You always roll maximum. So it's three d ten. Yeah, resolve plus composure. Oh, result. Uh, yeah, three. Okay. One. You got one. All right. Yep. You drink uh, all of your wounds with the exception of that aggravated. <coughs> oh yay. Because that aggravated, you got it from the oozes, right? Yeah. They, they like they burnt your arm, so like you have a you have a scarred out kind of like a uh, dead patch of your arm. Yep. Um, uh, and you kind of wash it off and help yourself. And man, that water that 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 is the stuff. That is some go <laughs> juice. Damn, son, like you've you've done some stuff in your day, right? But uh, I need a but, water whew. bottle. Oh boy. And I still don't have a damn water bottle. You still don't have a water bottle. You still can't get the fucking water to death. <laughs> Round two, fight. Shit, still no water bottle. Um, okay. Describe the, uh, as, as placing a willpower roll to minus two and on gaining the motivation for extra chamber. Not a bad check, Saranus. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll roll around and see how it feels. So, uh, you head into the glade. And uh, this time, as you head further into the glade, things start to happen a little more the way you remember them. All roads lead to Rome. Right? You don't find a beach. Then you find, like, a, there's a small, like, mountain pass you eventually come to. Um, and uh, you come to a small mountain pass and, and kind of just, just go through the, the deep forest to the side and start following the tracks. And then you find yourself in the clearing. Hello! Anybody here? After a second uh, of anticipation on the air, like, you get the idea that there were a lot of a lot of leaflings blending into the trees watching, but only one will, uh, only one will appear, and she appears in a swirl, like a, like a little tornado of leaves and grass and, and, and plant just right in front of you. In such a magical display that I can only describe it with onomatopoeia, <laughs> right? Uh, and 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 uh, the the tallest of all the leaflings, the pretty one, as you recall, her name was. They're uh, yeah. they're, they're the the mother of the pack, as it were. Uh, she kind of sits down on her tallest of the three stumps, and then with a snap of her finger. Like her two thick, wider, more built little uh, bodyguard leaflings will 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 materialize in much the same fashion on their little shorter stumps. And she says, "Thinking." Yep. I need I need help. She says, uh, "The pretty one <clears throat> kind of like looks you up and down." She says, "Thinky sad." Yep. 
I came to help a friend, and well, she's not here now. <laughs> Explain. Lucky died. You can almost hear like the <gasps> from like the collective audience that is like watching this conversation <laughs> in the trees, and then you like you actually hear a shh, like as they start hushing each other because you're not supposed to know they're there. You see. <laughs> Um, yeah, I tried to, to, to see if you could help her. Um, she says... She got hurt really badly. She, she gives <laughs> you, she gives you a long look in, 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 a, in a fashion that is, by your experience, entirely out of character for a leafling. Like, the leaflings tend to be a little, a little zany, a little goofy, a little cute, like a little emotionally yeah. excitable. Like, she gives you a, a distinctly calculating look. She's thinking and, 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 and going over something in her head. And after a moment of tense silence, uh, her little green lips part. And she says, Leaflings have no power over death. But... Where you lay her to rest. She claps her little leaf hands together and uh, a leafling will kind of like flutter out of the ceiling. And and, and, it, and it, has a, it has a little wineskin. And she and, and, and the you know it'll flutter over to you and hand you this wineskin. This wineskin is heavy with some kind of liquid. She says, Those are the waters of death. Pour them on Lucky's grave as a sign of honor for the leaflings always remember their own. I will do that. I am sorry. Lucky was a bright soul. She danced well and proud. You can say that. <laughs> the world's song is so much sadder without her harmony. She will reach up to her shoulder and she will pluck a leaf off her shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. And she hands it to you and she'll do this three times. And if with each leaf that she hands you, she says, thinky, angry, pushy. Mm -hmm. She says, okay. uh, we are sorry. So am I. And then well, you, and then like you, look, you say so am I. And when you open your eyes again, you're alone, mm -hmm. and there is a singular leaf, probably intended for you to uh, get passage back home on the on the stump. <clears throat> okay. Well, we'll go ahead and take it and and. Dance our way home. <laughs> All right. Uh, roll me, roll me dexterity plus occult. And uh, what is your prayer? Um. I'm gonna start. I'm a. I'm. I'm gonna head back to where we were um, originally. So it would be something along the lines of like Levi and and. And Axel and, and just thinking that whole scene and getting get back there. Okay. To that alleyway. Take me to my friends, take me to my friends, take me to my friends. Like you actually have to yeah. have something you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it would be. Okay. Um and did you get a, a Dex plus a cult success? Um getting ready to roll that here in just a minute, as soon as I realize okay. I didn't see what <laughs> Two successes. Two successes, all right. Two um, successes. So uh, so you start casting the spell. The leaf that you're burning is uh, is consumed into the air. And uh, you start to feel the, 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 you know, reality gets thin, like insubstantial, as if the laws of existence itself are, themselves are starting to decay and rot. Uh, 
and you fall through. And when you fall through, you actually find yourself on the couch at the gas station where all of your friends would be if they weren't dead. Right. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving a beat. I'm giving a beat to Krista Genesis. That is fantastic. There's no place like Death Fuck You Museum. There's no place like Death Fuck Museum. There's no place like Death Fuck Museum. There's no place like Death Fuck Museum. <laughs> that oh. is amazing. Yes, yes, it did. Oh. The gas station blew up. <laughs> like the walls are wrecked and charred. Uh, but that's where your friends were. That's where they all worked. Or Justice uh. literally murdered them and probably ate some of them. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna walk out and, and call for a cab. Okay. Uh, and that's where we're going to flip over to... Uh, it was just, just the couch. Just my couch it was just, just the couch survived. Uh, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to... Yeah, before I get up, I pat the couch. Good couch. Good couch. <laughs> if I was the Marion I'll kind. see you later. <laughs> get the job. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I actually wasn't here, so I had to... Today, the role of couch shall be played by Matt... <laughs> we decided since he had such a hard time role playing human beings, we'd take it a notch down, something a little easier for him to handle. So now he can just sit and wait until he's used. It's nice. I'm a pullout though, so I've got versatility. <laughs> That's what Ew. she said. Ew. Oh wait, I have an emote for that. Hold on. <sighs> I have an emote for that. I think. Did they make it away? Did they take it away? There it is. Giggity. Oh really? Is that a is that a BTTV emote? Oh no, no it's a it's, mode. Uh, Co Carnage. Um, I like. He actually has a giggity emote. I like that one myself. Not no. Nailed it. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna flip the camera over to Levi Waterhouse. Levi, <laughs> you're, you're, it's, it's right on your face. Oh my gosh! It's, it's like just, people it's like, can see me and stuff. It's like right there. Right. Wow. So what I want you to do, Levi? If I look deeply enough into this camera, I bet I can see all the rest of them back. Uh, that's not working. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. It only works okay. if you're not retarded. <laughs> well oh. then, um, there's no fixing that. <laughs> Ice. All right, later, Saranus. See you, Saranus. All right, so... Uh, Thank so you for the help. I want you to do me your best but silent sleeping impression. So hey guys, how you guys doing today? <laughs> guys having a good day? <laughs> okay. Guys having a good day? Okay, so what happened? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, 
Uh, remind, re remind, remind Yumi when that's all said and done. I got, we gotta highlight that. Oh my god! No, uh, Matt, he just straight up got up and left. Like, <laughs> do that. I was like, you just let me impress as soon as you were like, 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 literally just took his headphones off and left. Gone <laughs> <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> Here I am acting <laughs> like, like a high class actor, and he just leaves in the middle of my performance. <laughs> you sir are a butthole. You didn't even know I left. <laughs> no, I you didn't even, even know I left. I was asleep the entire time. You know this? And he's like. Cracking up, like <laughs> laughing my ass off. <laughs> oh man! You told me to do my best impression of being asleep I silently. <laughs> I went ahead and I did the silent sleep thing. time I hit my second pose, I was starting to wonder, like, what's he waiting for? <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> So, uh, oh. Levi, um, God damn it. <laughs> so, Levi, oh. you are, oh. uh, you're sitting on the couch at your house. Oh. You're sitting Waking on the couch. Or... No, no, you just, we're going to oh, I... flash, right. fast forward, like, camera flash over to Levi sitting on his couch at his house. Oh, uh, okay. And, 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 uh, Tanya, dead, run through, bleeding, blood all over her face, still, still messy from her last meal, is, uh, is sitting on the couch next to you. Slumped. To be fair, I was more okay with that than everybody else was. But... With her eyes open. Staring past you, dead. And you look over and you're just starting to realize what's going on. When your attention is drawn back in front of you, uh, and where nobody had been standing a moment before, your little sister is standing, Elsa. And she looks at you and she says... Wait, could, she, question, she, back up. Do I actually have Tanya sitting there dead yes. on my... Oh, yes, you do. Shit, she's actually there. <laughs> so, and, and and Elsa is 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 looking at you, and she's just looking at you like dead on, like with a, with a dead serious face, right? She says, "It could have been you, <laughs> Levi. It could have been you, and you look over at the body, like what?" Like, in, who in no, fuck's no, name thought between, this was a... yeah, yeah, I'm looking between Elsa and Tanya like, what does my sister know that I don't know that she knows? And you look at Tanya, and then you look back at Elsa, and it's not Elsa in front of you anymore. It's Tanya looking what? at you saying, no, that's it could have been you, Levi. <coughs> it could have been you. It definitely would not have been me. Now I you're always... going... And that's when you are shaken awake. Gah! What? What? <laughs> Can we do that again? Can we rewind it up? <laughs> like, and that's when you're shaken awake. Go. What? 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 <laughs> what? What happened? Where is it? I looked at my left. I looked. I looked where Tanya was sitting. Oh my! You're not. You're not at home. You're in. You're in. A, you're in a hospital bed. Actually, it's not a hospital bed. It's oh. You're at you're at the medical house. 
You're at you're Wait. at you're at the Kennington safe house. Oh. You're in Oof. your room. That's a little better. Um, Squeege. And, real quick. Yo. Did you see who followed me on Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> After all this with him sleeping, <laughs> I can follow my sleep signals. <laughs> um Who's so shaking me awake? Who's shaking Go. you awake? Judas. What's going on? Judas, Judas? is shaking you awake. Judas is shaking. Oh, Judas Kennington crap. is shaking you awake. <laughs> Levi, Levi! What? Jesus God. fucking Christ! How long do I gotta shake you? Where's Tanya? What? Oh, can I go back to sleep now? Five more minutes, I swear. <laughs> Slap! Oh, God, why would you do that? that Where's Tanya? Don't make me fight you. I don't want to tell. You'll find out in the papers, probably. <laughs> Levi. Okay, look, look, it's bad, it's bad. She's, um, she's not coming back. Where did she go? Uh, let's hope it was heaven. <laughs> like, you can see it. His yeah, I saw coming. your lip twitch when you, <laughs> like, your lip twitched all by itself. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. He takes a step back, he says, no. You are handling this the wrong way, sir. No. Look, look, I'm sorry. She went out no. a hero, but that's not any consolation, and I wish it hadn't no. happened myself. Yes, I know. I, it sucks. Like, I, I tried to get her out of the way. So you I tried? Had... Yeah, I know. Yoda says there's no try, but I did. I tried. <clears throat> I did not, as it turned out. He fucking hauls off and, and punches you right in the fucking face. <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he just fucking hauls off and crap! <laughs> oh, that was deserved. I earned that. And then he will turn around and slam the fucking door. As did, did he leave or did he just slam the door closed? Yes. So both, okay. Alright. <clears throat> Um. Well, I had I earned. Uh, I look is 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 uh, Jeeves in the room? Yes, Jeeves is in his cage, looking at All you right. judgmentally. Now I'll open the cage and like start petting his nose or something cute like that. I tried. <laughs> I didn't want this to happen. But, you know. <laughs> and I think that that pretty much wraps it up. Like that that pretty much brings uh brings episode three to a close. We'll leave it on that note there. We'll leave it on the note of I tried. Um So Oh god. Okay, now that I'm all feelsed up again. Jesus. I had to put I had to put Judas on panel. Like I had to get in character with Judas at least once, right? Just to Fucking depress myself some more. That was great. Like, <laughs> right? Holy shit. Uh, I told myself I was going to stop drinking because the drink was strong enough already, but what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I know them feels. Got Ooh. my mustache. Uh... Yeah, so on, on your way, like, Jack, on, on your way, like, up the stairs into the into the medical house, looking for the others, uh, like, Judas will be storming his way. There's no talking to him, right? Like, right. he's fucking, he's he's obviously found out, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> At least you don't have to break the bad news. I was just saying, we, if anything, we can end it, like, where I kind of just stop and, like, look at him, like, I, we need to talk. Yeah. But that kind of thing. Why would you need to talk to him? He's pissed. He knows what happened. They're so... Because human beings have things called feelings, Matt. I know this is alien to you. Uh, <laughs> I, I know you've explained this to me before, but I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Uh, that pretty much wraps up with, uh, with with what I had planned for this session. But rather than We're just... gonna ask me anything! Spoilers, asshole. I wasn't done talking. Oh. Now, now you went and you took my thing and you said it. And now I can't say my thing. Aww.
You know what? And this You're is gonna, why get, you can't be a trainer, man. Sit no, in the corner. Listen, listen. In the that's corner. That's get in the corner, Matt. Matt. All, all, of, you just, all, of, you just, all of you viewers, you got to start shouting that you want him to do the Ask Me Anything. You, you just spoiled. It. You literally just ruined spoilers for everybody. I, I No spoilers! That spoiler was so bad that, like, future spoilers will be worse because of it, okay? I, I can't help it. I'm, <laughs> I've got a disability, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can't oh. like I tried. Krista, oh, shut up! Krista, <laughs> shh. You stole fizzy lifting drinks! <laughs> and they were just. They were so fizzy. <laughs> and, and I felt lifted. Oh. And I All right. Up. Um, so here's the only the way to get down is the fart. Okay, so let's. Burp. You have to burp. Oh, that was weird. We did that in synchronicity. That's not what that word means. What's the title of the stream? What's the title of the stream? I haven't even... <laughs> that we're going to have an AMA. RP and AMA. Okay. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry that I wrote the title of the stream out for everybody. All right. I, so... I, uh, I shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. Bad, bad, bad. bad. All right. So uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're, we're going to start. We're going to start with Jack. Because uh, in in the aftermath of what had happened, we are going there. I burped. I'm in town now. <laughs> that is, you know, that is a stronger way to give the middle finger than just doing the like that. Like the if thumb. you add knuckles and a thumb oh, yeah. for some That's reason, what I do. It's so much stronger. Yep. I, one of those weird things I've observed about giving the finger while driving around. <laughs> Either that or just the lazy one where it's just like this. <laughs> one of those What's weird that? things I've observed about getting the finger while driving around. Hey, fun fact. Actually, things like that, like giving the finger, is illegal <laughs> on the Autobahn. Is it? You can really? actually get like pulled over and arrested for that. That's okay. Just give the front version. <laughs> no. like You can't give any kind of road rage or signal. You can't yeah. yell at other drivers or anything on the Autobahn. Oh, that yeah. figures because you can go as fast as you want on the autobahn, so it makes sense. You uh, have. speed limit is as fast as your car can safely handle. That's what I said. Well, yeah, but it's not as fast as you want, it's as fast as your car could safely handle because your car Same can thing. go faster than it can safely handle. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> Same thing. Not, not the not the van I drive, I can't. It can't right, so, um, uh, Jack. <clears throat> We were going yeah. over your archetypical tropes, your insecurity, and your vice, uh, or your virtue. Yeah, you still didn't tell us what changed on his shit. That's because we're about to, Matt. Jesus, but, by the way, it's the fucking horses, days. Matt. God. I, I just want to point out, did you know it's the top of the hour? Okay, so after the break. <laughs> God, after the break, we're going <laughs> to... Because screw all you viewers, man. Uh, we will be right back. <laughs> After these messages, <laughs> we will learn Ian's backstory. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm great. <laughs>
All right, <clears throat> and then I unmute people. Okay, <clears throat> so Jack. Yes. Okay, what was your virtue? What was the virtue? Oh, vir <laughs> wait, no. I had an upside to my character. Wow. <laughs> well, very I don't know what the fucking darkness, was, right? I, I, I never was, saw it. Was it was very charitous originally. All right, and what 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 was it that we decided to change that to? Very to be protective. fair, he's got a bank account now. That very protected. Right. Very now, uh, there was a, there was a root cause for all, for a lot of these changes, and I I don't know if you wanted to talk about that real quick or not. Uh, you like can. The in, okay, so the uh the the, the in character changes reasons I meant. <clears throat> Sorry. How dare you exist, Matt? Fuck off. I, I know. I, okay, fine. I'm back out of camera. <laughs> yeah, if you want to talk about him, you can. I'm sorry, everyone. I'll just go back. Oh, well, to I don't want to be the one to explain it. So, but, but it's your character, bro. <coughs> Take the responsibility. Having a character is a really big responsibility. Optical, you got to watch. I don't them like it. Feed them and explain them to the audience and, and pet I them. Don't and pet them and. Give them beats. I don't wanna. <laughs> now, generally, the main the main changes is, is really comes from obviously from from Danya passing. Yeah. Um, but it's it's also because him as a character has has evolved like as he's experienced things with these people because he's now Charizard. Well, no, because these <laughs> things have never he's never experienced anything like this. Like he he knows a lot, but he's never like. So he's not Charizard. Is he Raichu? Shut up. Didn't we agree you were gonna shut up? <laughs> Blastoise. He's Blastoise. That's okay. Blastoise. Matt, you're, you're doing this thing where you're talking again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> Alright. Uh, so, where were you? Um. So, yeah. We, we did the virtue. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah the, he... So, the, the new virtue is protective instead of, uh, instead of yeah. charitous. Alright. Uh, um, what, what about your new insecurity? It's like charity. Um, I don't remember what. It, oh, it, the, it used to be uh, the fear of not being able to pay anyone back, or yep. being unable to pay anyone back. Uh, now it's fear for the fear of the worst case scenario. So now Jack is like, he's he's going to react as if things happened in the worst possible way. So he's become a pessimist. <laughs> Well, I mean, he's become a guy who watched the girlie like get murdered in front of his face. Yeah. Like that's the other thing. Is, like, I don't think anybody... that bad. I mean, as far as deaths go, Katana's pretty clean. <laughs> like you could have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling Blueberry. Like, you said imagine that. everything being the worst that it could possibly be. You There's know what happens? This is Katana. what happened here. There's you like rape to death Jack by dolls. Watched the girl that he had a crush on get unwillingly committed seppuku. Unwillingly what? committed seppuku. Hey, here's the real question. It makes sense. Like that's what happened. Was it unwilling seppuku though? I mean, she knew she was a cannibal now, and she didn't, and she was, and that wasn't copacetic. Well, we'll never know. True. <laughs> are, are you sure about that? You'll hope you never find out. Yeah. Okay. Out of character, I do want to find out. In character, yeah, no, I don't want to really talk to Tanya again because she's dead and should stay that way. Yeah. Um. <laughs> wow! Wow! Look, man, coming back is not natural. Ask, ask Dean Winchester. Coming back is not natural. Things they're dead should stay Nothing dead. Nothing that Everyone any of these characters that. experienced is natural. Uh, okay, so uh, your insecurity changed from uh, from fear of never being able to pay anybody back to fear of the worst case scenario. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. There was a Levi Tanya ship. Yes. Go ahead. Tell more about that. I'm curious. Just out of curiosity. Oh, no, it, it, not... <laughs> it, it, it started... It, okay, Levi, here's how it started, right? It started, Matt, okay. it, yeah. it started at the moment where, where Tanya agreed to talk to Elsa for Levi, right? She's, into, she's ingratiating sense. herself to the family, and then it, it, it intensified when Tanya became the person who could hug Levi out of hulking. Oh, that's true. Oh, I see. Huh. No, that makes sense. That was actually one of the last things that Tanya said at all. Um, so, uh, so what about your three archetypical tropes? What were they, and what did we change them to? 
Um, Bears of Burden for others is still the same. Yep. Never the whole truth is still the same. But then we changed the other one, which was indirect approach to Trickster. Right, right, right. So where, where Trickster will uh, Trickster will ping when you misdirect, mislead, or or deceive your enemies. Right. It's not. It's it's more direct. I think we agreed that it was going to be a more direct than indirect approach. Yep. But not as like just straight on, absolutely direct. Yeah. Not, it's not the brute elbow grease approach. It's it's more. Right. It's throwing stones at ogres. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. And that was, those were all the changes we had as a result of gameplay thus far and Tanya Louder's death, right? Mm, yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> and every episode in the World of Darkness versus Supernatural is somebody coming back from the dead every time because the, the hunters always die in the world. Always. Every time. I mean, there's no winning for the hunters. I mean, there might be a whole game line out there made for hunters, but you know how the episode ends. The They're episode ends with the Guardians of the Veil every time. Every time. Well, that's only if you're playing Mage. I mean, to be fair. Everybody's playing Mage. They just don't know it. That's <laughs> really hard to argue with. That's a good point. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, let's, do, let's do a little Q&A here. Um, let's, uh, let's open up with questions for Levi. Who has who has oh. questions for Levi? Do people ask Levi questions? Do they actually care about his opinion? This is going to be fun to find out. No, nobody cares. So far, I don't I don't see any questions for Levi. That's so. because fifteen second delay, Matt. <laughs> no one cares about me. I need to go. I know they haven't heard me say anything. I need to find a demon possessed katana wielder now. <laughs> <laughs> Why has my existence come to this? Damn you, internet. Oh, hey, there's a question. Levi, what's your favorite food? Macaroni. No, Dojo has a question. Oh, Dojo had a question. Will Matt hulk out if I called him Matthew Waterhouse? No, that will not happen. Sorry. With no Tanya, how is Angry going to avoid his PMS now? The same way he did before, ladies and gents. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he learned, he learned to, com to calm it down now. No, I didn't. Tanya managed to calm him down. He was not going. I, I guess he could always either no, carry you around. You calmed yourself could, down. Hang on. There, there are two ways this could go. He could carry around a Tanya plushie, or he could imagine <laughs> a Tanya hugging him every time he needs to calm down. I no, mean, you, you calmed yourself down the one time. Because remember, yeah, you had the headache. The you had the, the post Hulk hangover. No, I don't remember that, actually. Yeah, that was last session, Matt. You have the you have the memory of a genius. Oh, I did calm myself down. Okay. <laughs> so since I'm no longer Tanya dependent to calm myself down, I will avoid my PMS in the regular way. <laughs> when Judas punched him, actually, he wasn't very close at all because he was feeling guilty, not angry. He's angry about being misunderstood, but at the same time, he understands why that might have happened. On the other hand, Jeremiah is a rich bastard and can get another girlfriend anytime he wants. So fuck that guy. <laughs> well does played. The shop shake, does the shop stay closed while you're out? How are you going to keep the lights on for your sister? Sister knows how to run the shop. Supposedly, I have someone who actually can run the shop while I'm gone. But yeah, so a good chunk of the time, he actually will just, you know, close the shop and not care. Because after all... Jeremiah paid him a shitload of money for that crucifix that he managed to dig up, and for any future crucifix. Yeah, uh, might at the start of uh, at the start of episode two, which was the episode that introduced Tanya before she died in episode three. Damn, that was a short-lived character. Uh, <laughs> on the bright side, Jeremiah paid up before he died, and I'm never gonna have to deliver on the rest of my agreement with him as a business after interaction because he's dead. Well, a Tanya body pillow. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I wasn't going to dignify it with a response. I, I dignified it with a response for you, Matt. Uh, thank you. What would Levi think is the worst place he's been to so far? Hmm. That is an interesting question, actually. I would say that probably the worst place he's been to so far was the land of the leaflings. He didn't know what the fuck was going on. He could barely relate to these people, and he was lame the whole entire time. It sucked. No! I take it back. The hospital with Hilda. Oh my gosh, that was terrible. 
He couldn't get a word in edgewise and was constantly told to shut up and hush, even though he was being assaulted by dark demons or whatever. Shut up. See? Like that. Shh. <laughs> I just realized that Levi is almost literally a bullet in China's shop. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. No, Christogenesis, I don't have horns yet. Yet. Thank you for your opinion, though. Yeah, yet. yet. Uh, yeah. I'll totally get horns eventually. Levi springs horns as we speak. Poof! That'll be Next adventure begins with horns. Congratulations. Man! It's actually not true. The next adventure begins with a really bad dream. With a what? With a really bad dream. I'm getting sick of bad dreams, because the white rabbit hasn't shown up in any of them lately. I mean... I know, right? Yeah. Well, it's because you have a mouse now. I don't have a mouse. It's a rat, you fuckwad. Hilda wants your phone number. Levi shifts the Is coast. it painful when he, Levi hulks out? I actually imagine that it's not. It's like it's like getting in a really good stretch, you know, where you feel like, oh, you just you just stretched more than you ever felt like you could before, and and so it's it's painful in like that really good massage kind of way. But like, it's not a pain that you regret. That's for sure. A certain sure song is like NBD. Levi blacks totally... out every time. No, he doesn't black out. He remembers certain stuff. He just is very selective about what he remembers by denying anything that he doesn't want to remember. <laughs> <laughs> NBD, I don't get the reference, Pook. No big deal. Oh. <laughs> right, right, right. That's true. Levi actually was not that concerned with... Uh, with uh, Tanya eating people. I mean, to be fair, okay, the, the way Levi looks at it, you know, his powers involve him hulking out and then destroying a bunch of innocent people's lives and cars. And so, you know, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, is her being struck with cannibalism really that big of a deal? And besides, you know, maybe they could get it fixed. I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, so. All right, well, if there are more questions for Levi, we'll come back around, all right? But I wanna, I wanna pass the stick over to, over to Jack. Do we have any questions for Jack? Uh, questions for Jack. There's one question left for Levi before we get to the Jack part. So people start asking um, questions in chat for Jack to answer. The it. answer is Levi hadn't had enough time to think about it at the time. And honestly, he was more concerned with, sur concerned with surviving the night. After that, he would have put more thought into it. Um, Survive the night. There you go. That's why. So... He he doesn't know if he could have done more to save her. He's not gonna like he 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 misses her. She's gone, but he's not gonna beat himself up over the things that he had no control over. That's not really in Levi's character. I mean, if he if that wasn't his character, then he would hate being the Hulk even more than he does already. <laughs> he does really hate his power, doesn't he? He he does he does hate his power somewhat. All right, Jack, you're up. Questions for you are flowing. Why does Jack never remain calm? Sure he is. <laughs> cop out answer. No, it, it's not a cop out answer. It's because that's just who he is. He, he, he. I don't know. He panics, and that's just who he is. Like, he can't help it. He can't help it. Oh, uh, is it why because does of Jack? He, wait, what? Oh, I was gonna ask if it was because of Nam. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's because he was in numb. No, uh, let's see. Why does Jack hate the police that hate police that aren't Axel? Because Axel, okay, backstory between him and Axel. Um, one of the coffee shops that, that uh Jack used to hang out at when he was in his teens. Um, well not when he was in his teens, but anyway, one of the coffee shops I used to hang out at a lot. Um, Axel used to be a uh, security there, off duty, um, special like special duty officer there, and uh, he got to know Axel pretty well there, and um, so he has a, he has a slight respect for Axel, but at the same time he hates police because police, and they've always never done anything good for him ever, ever. They've accused him of things that he's never done, things like that. With Jack knowing so many people, I'm sure he can get connections to a weapon shop somewhere. I mean, Jack can shut up, can suit up Levi to look like Hawks from Fallout 3. He could. Just I've got a chin like now. Jack does like the ladies. He's uh, just no good with them. Is Jack a felon? Why doesn't he carry some kind of weapon? Jack is not a felon. He doesn't like guns. Um, he doesn't mind them 
as per like if other people use them, but he doesn't like to use them himself. Uh, he was the guy who thought of going. For- Man, it's my turn, not yours. Shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to I, I'm trying to like elaborate on the conversation. He was the guy who thought of going for the ankle gun that Axel was carrying. What made him immediately think, man, I should have a firearm if he doesn't like guns that much? Uh, uh, and it probably has something to do with the fact that he was going to die if he didn't shoot back in yeah, that was, moment. He was busy Jack, digging his Jack, friend out of the rubble. Um, Jack likes to... He doesn't like to be in the limelight. Like, he doesn't like to be up front and in the limelight. He will if he absolutely has to and there's no other option. But he doesn't like to. And he probably could suit up other people, but that's not what he thinks about. Like he thinks about immediate, like immediate problems, like right here and now, and what can happen in the future. And yeah, as for he's not a felon. He's not a felon. At least he's probably like, well, he's not convicted. We'll say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's been busted a few times for a few times for misdemeanors, uh, such as, um, you know, criminal mischief, theft of city property, probably driving without a license a couple times, joyriding a couple times. But nothing like major, major. Mm. <laughs> the word of the day is in this episode is the shut up. <laughs> Brought to you by the letter S. Puka just had a question there. I don't know if you missed it or not. Uh, wait. We hear about things Jack thinks aren't right. So what are some of Jack's favorite things? Jack's favorite things, honestly, okay, this is what Jack loves. Like, he he loves just sitting around and just hanging out with friends. Like, nothing extravagant, nothing. Just just sitting down, like, at a cafe, just talking with his friends and just bullshitting. And that's, that's like, his favorite thing. And he loves to, I mean, he likes coffee. <laughs> coffee is right. Yeah, like, he, he loves just to... He loves just to hang out with friends, and that's that's about it. Like, that's his favorite thing in the world. Uh, so is all the money gone now that you aren't worried as much about paying people back? Um, no. I mean, that's really up to the DM, but I don't think that the money is gone. No, the money's it's- not gone. I imagine, like, a lot of the money is going to be spent on things like anonymous co- contributions to funerals and things like that. Because, yeah. like, there are a lot of dead people now that Jack knew. A lot of them. Yeah. And he owed them a lot. But yeah, that's that's the thing. Um he yeah, he would do a lot of like anonymous donations where like he would do it he knows a lot of the underground, so he would do it through like a third party. Pyramids for everybody. No, Jack Jack knows the difference between being able to pay somebody back with with something physical and not being able to ever really pay them back. Yeah. But and that's that was his main fear before was like being in debt to somebody so much that you can never pay somebody back. But he knew that that was the only, like there were times where that there was unavoidable. Yeah. Like he knows the difference between when something's avoidable and when something's unavoidable, and he can respect that. Who is the person that Jack hates the most? Uh, are you talking about in the party or in general? <laughs> <laughs> and immediately everybody's like, Levi. No. <laughs> uh, Jack is part of Anonymous and or the Illuminati. In general, um Jack doesn't really hate anybody. He he's under the strong belief that hate is a very strong word. He has really no like he doesn't loathe or wish for death for anybody. He has people he will absolutely avoid at all you know, at any kind of crossroads or anything, at at all costs, he will avoid them and he will avoid every interaction with them. But they are people that he will avoid for personal reasons. And they are people because he knows he doesn't mesh well with them and their personality. He doesn't agree with how they work or what they do or how they act. And he just, to avoid conflict, like direct conflict, he's like, no, we're not, we're just, I'm never going to see them. If he has to, like again, it, it comes down to the unavoidable. If he un- if it's unavoidable, then he will interact with them very, very, very minimally. Mm, no, Jack is not a part of any anything like any organization at all. He never really find like he in his mind he's like to be kind of cool to be a part of an organization, but he doesn't really see himself doing that.
Yeah, exactly, Krista. Like, that's the thing is that Jack holds his friends, who he considers friends, he holds them very closely. And he's worked with these guys so closely over, you know, this this period of time that he feels like he has to help. Like, he, he she should have protected them. Like, he should have protected her. He should have done more. And that's always what's going through his head. His head is, I could have done more. I, you know, I should have done more. I should have been there. Like, he... You know, in that scene, he wasn't there. Like he hung back, and he was he went he was back looking in his book. Well, if he wouldn't have done that, he would have been up front, and he could have done something. Um, who does Jack consider his friends? Well, I mean, he considers his party as friends, like everybody that he that he, that he really works with closely. He has a lot of. Most of most people in the city he considers acquaintances. If you've helped him, if you've interacted with him more than a few times, or if he willingly comes to you for anything other than help, then for him personally, then he he's considered you a friend. All right, and uh, we'll move we'll move on here. We'll uh, again like if, if there were more questions for Levi or Jack, um, we'll do we'll do another round here. Uh... Did you as a DM have a moment of doubt when you rolled the dice last week? Killing PCs is always a risky business. When I rolled those dice, uh, I knew for a fact that that Tanya couldn't handle an, an incoming exceptional success. Uh, the Katana had two automatic damage on top of the five successes we rolled for seven health levels of lethal damage, which is an automatic one-shot on top of damage she had already sustained. Um... As far as killing off the character goes, I had a moment of consideration where I, I, you know, I could have conjured a magical intervention out my ass or something, um, or, or you know, let somebody do something to like get in the way and save her. But there was a moment where Pluto Fairy asked before I could settle on my decision if she could take one last turn to to rip out, uh, to rip out the the demon possessed chick's throat and in that in that moment like pluto fairy and i met and were on the same wavelength where she was perfectly fine with killing off the character uh and i immediately moved forward with the intensity of the scene uh with the character's death like that that there there was there was a moment of doubt not not so much doubt more like i wasn't certain what to do with it because to me a pc's death isn't something that should ever be written off as a, as a possibility but it should always be something that you heavily consider and work with when it happens um <laughs> did i more uh okay like upon evil squeegee does not hesitate when it comes to killing pcs he had a chance to kill levi whose health was uh uh, yeah, I, I don't just randomly, like, I don't just, I don't just off people, f uh, just because the dice say so. For a good chunk of episode two, Levi was dancing in and out of Max Lethal boxes. Uh, he was hit by a couple of cars. Um, and it, it, it's more a question of whether or not I think that the death is appropriate to the story. And if it feels like the natural place the story should go. Uh, Squeegee, how does Cassie think about Hulk and telekinetic fist Axel? Um, well, I don't think Cassie knows. Well, I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let uh, where are you? I'm gonna let Pythagatron uh answer this one. Well, Dojo, as it turns out, Cassie doesn't know about the other boys or any of their powers. Because Axel hasn't told her yet, and she doesn't know about any of that, so she doesn't really have an opinion at all. I haven't been waiting through that for like ten minutes or anything. Um. <laughs> but yeah, no, I was gonna say, as far as I know, like out of character, she, we, we've, we've always done a very good job with hiding that from her. Oh, uh, there is one instance. Uh, Dojo has Dojo raised a point because she saw. There is a point where she did see. She didn't see Levi hulking out. But she saw Axel. Uh, she saw Axel pull Axel pull a Shazam against Kennington. Uh, and oh, that's right, she was there. No, she was no. Yes, but she, she was. was there. But she wasn't looking. She was taking care of Tanya. She may have failed to see it, but I doubt it. She was definitely there. It makes a loud noise. It's a big surge of power. The Ooh, question. Yeah, I mean, it would have. The the the, the 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 answer to that question in technicality is uh, that we don't know yet because 
uh, there hasn't been the opportunity to play it off. Actually, no, they're, they're, this, this would be something that, that the characters would know. Cassie does not remember seeing that. She knows she went in, but she does not recall encountering any of the supernatural. Um, she, she remembers uh, Kennington uh, losing his temper, and she remembers um, Axel settling it by throwing him. Uh, but the memories are, are off. Uh, they're, they're obviously not in line with reality. Um. Uh, okay. She did see. She did see Jeremiah. Yeah, she saw. She she was there the whole time, and uh, and that would have been something that that Axel himself would have noted is that his wife didn't seem to process or remember any of it when she woke up. Uh. Wyvern has a question for you too. If you didn't see that. Uh, does that uh, did I miss a Wyvern kid question? What is the origin of abilities like Levi's? The characters have no idea. Matt has finally figured out what splat we are playing. Matt knows which World of Darkness game it is, but that's something nobody else gets to know because I like nobody knowing unless they figure it out themselves. Uh, but it, so there is a legitimate in-character canon World of Darkness cause for all of these powers, uh, but none of the characters are aware. Uh, nobody understands yet. Um... Yes, he thinks it's an improvement to the bedroom casual apartment. <laughs> uh, da -da 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 -da. Is it Sunnydale Syndrome, where people in urban fantasy settings write things off they don't understand? It's something similar to, uh, like, it, like there is a healthy dose of Sunnydale Syndrome going on in the world of darkness. Um, but rather than looking and writing things off that they don't understand, uh, yeah, that like minds tend to explain away things that that don't make sense. Um, but yeah, that seems to be what's going on with uh, with her. The party has never returned to the hospital to find out what's up there. Um, And, uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait just a second more, see if there are any more questions, and then we'll pass it back off to Levi, uh, if I don't see Whoa, any Oh, I'm unmuted again. Hello, audience, I know you love me. I know you love me. Not really, I'm just saying that <laughs> and make myself feel valued. Shut up! Remember, it's the word of the day. So when do we get to see Matt role-playing Levi, role-playing a character in Dungeons and Damsels? I have an adventure planned. <laughs> yes! I have an adventure planned wherein I'm taking it an extra step further. Um, Is the blind taxi driver involved with the leaflings and will he the blind taxi leafling. driver return? Yeah, it, it was it was really heavily implied that the, taxi dri the blind taxi driver was a leafling himself. He uh, somehow and... crossed over from Leafling Land to Real Land and is doing the taxi driver job for some reason. Don't worry, this one's fast. Um, and then, uh, okay, so with, so on on that note, Shift Stick, uh, when do we get to see Matt role playing Levi, role playing a character in Dungeons and Damsels? What you're gonna actually get to see is Matt role playing Levi, role playing a character in Dungeons and Damsels who's actually pretending to be somebody in in character character that he actually isn't. Remember, I have to make up to that ambulance driver. Yep. The fact that, you know, I said I would get House Gryffindor to listen to his his house's proposals for an alliance. So can I, that, can I that's make, on this, me. This is something completely off topic, but I just saw on Twitter that, that Pith, I think, has eaten either a deep fried Reese's or a deep fried Snickers. Um, and... On the subject of Pith, I noticed on Twitter that that fucker's in Maine, which is basically the butthole of America. So no, that's you know, Florida, take it from that what you will. It's also his uh, anniversary. I will say that that episode of uh, that episode of Darkness Rising is not our next our next one. Um, the the episode right. for the record that we just finished was called The Lovers Justice. I've been revealing the names of the episodes at the end because I don't want to spoil what's going on. I would like to point out to the viewers that have been paying attention, though, justice is another word, another name for a virtue, 
which we've been covering in this series. So yeah. take and from we're still that, looking for hope. Fucking will or faith. Still looking for faith. It's true. Like you still haven't found, and you haven't heard about bones. I'll be in honest. I have actually not been looking very hard for faith. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you busted her phone, dude. The only lead that we had to the lady. So what Nothing do you want me? To, I gave you the faith phone. phone so that you could find faith at your leisure, and you go Le- and get Levi, a trash. Levi, Levi, tell me how that was a lead when nothing ever came into that phone. You didn't try. That's all I'm saying. You did yeah, not try did. to receive the very, text very hard, first Jeff. episode. You should tried. try harder to get texted on somebody else's you phone. You could have handed it to Lucky, <laughs> and she would have been like, beep, 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 beep. "But now Lucky's dead, so you fucked up." <laughs> wow, talk about a guilt trip! Holy shit. Okay, so uh, questions for Levi. Uh, are we doing? Uh, music we have not okay. actually found any virtues. We have not personally met any virtues that we know of. I'm pretty sure that I met charity or hope in the hospital when she gave Levi the miracle drug, but she never gave her name. And I also forgot to ask her name, so. <laughs> Oops. What do we know about hey, the virtues thus far, I was Levi? incapacitated, what, you know. What, what is it that we know about the virtues the thus far? Here. Every virtue that we've come across has been like a genie, like. What would happen if Jack decided to go to the, the They take the virtue and twist it into something Shift stick. I am buying shotgun shells, actually. Make a note of this. I'm buying Dragon Breath shotgun shells. Are you ever going to buy shotgun shells? (laughs) Yes. I am using my resources to buy Dragon Breath shotgun shells, which happen to be superheated magnesium that create a huge blast of flame that comes out of your shotgun. Do you double the resource requirement for those shotgun shells? There's... You can buy loads of specialized shotgun shells. You can buy shotgun shells that act as tasers. Oh, squeeze, that actually reminded me. I was going to... I was. That's so I don't know if they're really that much more expensive. Weapon shop on our way to the museum yeah. that episode. Uh, okay, I was so, going to so, buy him a brand new fucking shotgun. <laughs> the virtues do seem to help people clothes. and they get infected with darkness or people around them seem to get infected with darkness. Okay, so, so the virtues we've encountered so far, okay, the first virtue you guys encountered is probably pretty faith. sure we ran into justice. By the way, guys, it was probably Already. faith, but faith hasn't been on panel once. You you had faith apart. Like faith is a friend, like an acquaintance of everybody. We we probably ran into justice too. He was probably the Kennington's lawyer. That's my opinion. Um, he's just ooh, too he's too perfect. Nice he's too perfect. Um. Then there was Wait, uh, the very first episode was Sick Man's Prudence, right? Yep, Sick Man's Prudence. Yes. Okay, just want to make sure. That's so faith is kind of like the overrunning theme over everything, then. Uh, well, fa- faith is the character that you guys haven't found yet. Uh, faith is the faith is the virtue that like you guys knew faith before your adventures began. Like right. you just you you just encountered her. She was a person you didn't know much about. You'd crashed on her couch, Jack. Um, and the the adventures began Levi, when you could for stuff or you couldn't Jack find mean. faith. Stuff. Faith went missing in session one. Uh, right. and, and Justice that was not was Katana Cop. Katana uh, Cop was clearly the possessed waitress that we ended up offing. Yeah, uh, uh, Katana, uh, the waitress was was the victim there. But just like with Prudence infecting the world with darkness to si- to save Joe, and uh, and just like Hope uh, giving uh, good karma to Ke- to Ken- to Jeremiah Kennington's business, but inflicting him with this possessive berserk curse. Um, justice. The thing about this one is that nobody ever said they encountered justice. The, the, the katana was labeled justice, and it had all the earmarks of, like, a corrupted wish being granted. But yep. you guys never actually encountered something that specifically said justice was there. There's no doubt they, in the party's mind that justice was involved somehow here. Oh, yeah. But unlike got, the other virtues, the justice genie. has managed to elude detection. Yeah, they have they got hit with the literal genie. They also want the crucifixes. Now, there's an interesting question. Jeremiah Kennington clearly wanted the crucifixes, but we don't exactly know why. Could they, it, On the other hand, faith probably had in her possession one of the crucifixes there was a blank spot on the wall where clearly a crucifix had been and is now gone so is that somehow tied up in the power of the virtues it could be do we know for sure no no we just know that everywhere those crucifixes seem to crop up there is a shitload of weirdness even by comparison to your normal uh you know nice shirt matt 
Thank you. I'm trying to like keep my chin in the picture. I feel weird with it gone. He's That's very all. proud of his beard, guys. <laughs> no, it's not necessarily about the beard. It's just you know, like I I feel like my whole face should be in there instead of just like this. Are you like Bruce Campbell? You're proud of the chin. Uh, it's, it's not right, if the chin. if it's you not had not Bruce Campbell's the, chin, motherfucker. It's, it's not that I'm proud of the chin as much as it is that I'm worried when it's gone. <laughs> What's it doing when I don't know? Yeah, I. I What's I it doing it when I can't see it? Yeah, that's a good question. That's totally legit. That's I'm legit. invisible when nobody's looking. Um. Okay. So, so there, there were questions. Oh, what would have happen. happened if Jack decided to go to the tentacle building? What would have happened? Uh, would not have been safe for work. He probably no. would have been raped by tentacles. Jack uh, would have turned into a little Japanese schoolgirl, and that would have been the end of that. Uh, if Jack had, um. The katana he, was he the crucifix. Huh, that's interesting. I'm curious in knowing how you figure that. Um, that's the neighbor. If, if Jack had actually gone into the into the crucifix, he would have... Uh, I, I wish into, I was into the tentacle building. Into the tentacle building, you mean? Um, yeah, the, uh, the, that, that tentacle uh, building um, in post-reflection uh, would line up roughly with the museum. And the museum was loaded with tentacle dudes, so yeah. Imagine an entire museum full of tentacles that were just already there instead of being summonable and unsummonable by killing and leaving alone. Now, now I, I have a question for undead you. tentacle up, possessed Jeff? things. Out of out of character. Yep. That world that I that Jack went to that yep. was almost like a copy of of the city. Yep. Was it Wilson? I was pretty sure. That's the origin of where these this darkness is essentially breaking through. Jack may easily theorize that because of what he saw with the tentacles there. Um, does he know? No, but I will tell you one thing that, you, that out of character you may not have picked up. Um, mm -hmm. The Glade is a place in that world, and places in that world do mirror like like if you move a distance in the real world. Uh, in other words, check you, this out. The leaflings might not actually be serving whatever the light is. They might just be serving their own interests. Yeah. And you're hipsters. Um, <laughs> fucking hipsters. Um, but yeah, the, the I mean, I'm cool with hipsters as a business. Like a but I mean, when they try and take to? over the world with the light, that definitely seems like a like a reasonable conclusion for Jack to come to is that the darkness is coming from this other world. Uh, this it raises is. the question too: of Can you transfer to the other world with more than just leaves? Like if you picked up a rock from no, there. Currently, uh, Jack's only means of transferring to the to the uh, to the to the other world uh, is yeah. And Jack would never even thought about that either. Like, yeah, well, I mean, the, oh, no, the, the, I the, the, the rules for the spell are pretty specific. Basically, uh, it only works if you use a leaf, yeah. and it needs to be especially. It can't just be a leaf off any old tree. Yeah, but Jack. the other thing is, is like that. That's like Jack. Jack is the kind of person who takes what is told to him. Like, he doesn't take it with a grain of salt. Like, yeah. if it's told to him, like, in determination, he's like, okay, this is this is rule. This is law. This is how it is. Man, I'm going to remember that. Thank you. But, I mean, it's... I will say, I, will say, uh, I am running a canonical World of Darkness game here. Uh, there are only minor things that aren't canon. Is. Uh, where I have, where I have, where I'm using some of the suggested house rules in some of the in some of the books for some of the scenarios. From what I've figured out, it's almost disappointing. But he is indeed running a canonical thing. It's not actually house. I rules haven't even touched non-canon stuff yet, bro. Uh, I know. And not... uh, and and so the 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 other world uh, and the mechanics thereof is a solid thing. And and what that means is that uh, regardless of what it actually is, you can guarantee that that other world could easily become a source of supernatural problem because there is nothing that exists in the world of darkness that is not out to seriously fuck you somehow. Right. Uh, That's not true. Uh, even Matt, who's figured out what, uh, like, figured out some of the details of what's happening cosmologically hasn't really nailed down what the darkness is yet. I mean, okay, it is true that everything in the world of darkness is out, to, is out to screw you over. But you can always try and screw it over back. I mean, and as long as you may or may not... Well, shift, in that in that regard, I would say that Raph is, is able to be... Hey, I'd like to point out, in the load screen, it said, where are the vices? Clearly, Wrath is one of the vices. Also, right. that guy may or may not be dating my sister. Why, why don't you bring that up when you're not trouncing over optical talking? 
Because I like that look of, you know, silent uh, <laughs> suffering. I, what, what were you going to say? What were you going to say, Optical? Matt, yeah, I can I, talk louder than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. All right, go ahead, Jack. Answer that question. But no, uh, what I would say, hold on. Let me know if, if the, cause I had to turn the game back down. Is this okay? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get it right back. Um, <laughs> the main thing, I would I would think that the reason that Wrath can travel is because he is a supernatural being, whereas we are mortals that were given a given powers or gifts, whereas he is. Yeah, whatever Wrath is. Being. Whatever Wrath is, he's clearly more advanced along the lines of being a supernatural than the rest of us are. Well, I mean, it's it's just like the Leaflings. Like the Leaflings can travel between the worlds. Like, and we've that's seen true. that. That's like, true. We don't we don't even know how they do that one. Right, but we've seen that. Like that's happened. So yep. Uh, the the general consensus seems to be that whatever means that uh, Wrath uses to cross between worlds are not the means that the PCs are using to cross between worlds. And it's perfectly like the PCs only know of one ma- one one way to cross between worlds. One of the things I love about the World of Darkness is every single one of the splats, right down to uh, like every single one of the splats has something that does like similar stuff right yep. crossing into other worlds even even a game like vampire that has very 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 little to do with anything except for this plane of existence has there are disciplines and things like that uh that let you do shit like cross into the underworld or cross into the shadow or all kinds of stuff um so it's it's, it's also very possible that uh wrath just knows a different spell and Doja brings up Which, the point the leaves out of character thing. gives me the idea that I might be able to learn. Yeah, like, you're right. And actually, Jack has even thought about this: is that there is something to learn from who he originally thought as as punk. Yes, and he, I actually, find right, it, he talked to him before. I, yep. I find it interesting and, that, that some people seem to be jumping to the conclusion that the that the vices and the virtues are actually the same people. It it could be possible that a, that a, that a, that, a, that a vice is a fallen virtue. I don't think that wrath is justice. Because Wrath told us about that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Wrath, Wrath actually told uh, Wrath told Jack uh, before he was identified as Wrath. Wrath told Jack at the end of episode two that JC or JK was going to uh, JK KC KC was going to be an opportunity for Jack to do some good and prove that he wasn't one of the bad guys that Wrath would need to off. It was heavily implied was, there that that Wrath was the was, talk where I actually tried yeah. to learn something from him to try and get some knowledge yeah. about everything and yep yeah. and and basically right like you, you know you tried to pry information out of him and his his response was I'm not telling you shit until I know that you're one of the good guys because if you're not I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> yeah. Which to be fair is pretty after, in keeping with Wrath. After this whole episode with the whole scene with him in the you know out down there, he'll be more forthcoming. Yeah, yeah, no, Rath Rath has started to open up a little and uh and, and like he, he you know, he he empathized with you at some point. He said he'd lost Personally people. I still plan on pounding Rath's face in and as soon as I find out that he's Wrath, I plan on fate pounding it in even harder. <laughs> Date my sister without letting me know. Fuck you. Wrath could be a rogue leafly, we don't know. That's a good idea. Yeah, Pluto, thank I mean, you for giving the FC ideas. Pluto. We always appreciate more ideas, making the story more interesting than Grant, Grant could be on his own. Um, Pluto Fairy had, has an idea as well. She thinks that Wrath is a... Uh, she doesn't know he's Wrath yet, because she hasn't seen this broadcast. But she thinks that he's actually a, a werewolf. Hmm. Yeah, exactly, Mojoga. Yep. Like, yep. I'll be right back. Which right, actually, so, Jack would hold Wrath actually as like he he now considers him a friend. Yeah, Wrath like, has been just, Wrath has been there when Jack didn't ask for the help helping. Yeah, and not only that, but Wrath was there when when Jack was at his weakest when he doesn't like he doesn't like Jack doesn't show that side to anybody. Yep. So if somebody happens to come across and see that he's it's something important to him. Mm. I can relate to not letting people see you when you are at your weakest, Jack. As a matter of fact, I believe that's one of the stats on my sheet, my archetypical tropes, and my 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 insecurity is I'm afraid of people seeing me as weak. <laughs> um. <laughs> Beat the world, the world, that, please. That is amazing. <laughs> Oh, God, B! Do the worlds still mix as well as they used to 
Actually, and Pukajutsu can confirm this if he's actually still here. Uh, the worlds mix uh, infinitely better than they used to. Um, in Classic World of Darkness, the books were all written from the perspective of solely the existence of this kind of creature. So when you're playing Vampire, the Vampire books were initially written without Changeling or Werewolf or Mage in mind. They mention wizards, they mention that werewolves exist, but they provide you with these, with these, uh, with these makeshift rules that don't actually accurately represent those creatures at all. Uh, and they very poorly handle explaining any crossover outside of a few kinds of uh, examples where werewolves just hate everything, uh, for example. But the, the, the New World of Darkness, uh, Requiem, Forsaken, Lost, and Awakening, uh, they are... The, the, they, it's baked right in that they all exist in the same world, and they, they handle a lot of the crossover stuff in the books with rules and setting information, uh, and it is, it is really heavily up to the storyteller how much the different factions interweave or like or know of one another. I myself am a fan of running it so that the other, uh, so the other supernaturals, they might just know, you know, hey, shit, I'm a mage, right? Like, magic is fucking possible. You cast spells, whatever. A werewolf's not a stretch. And some other mage might be like, actually, yeah, werewolves are a real thing. And then both of these two mages look at each other and go, what do we know about them? Uh, like, because yeah, all, of the, all of the factions have their reasons to keep everything a secret, except for Geists, which uh, I rewrote to have one. To have what? Uh, I wrote, I rewrote Geist into having a Mists-like... Uh, effect and, oh, okay. a, uh, and, and, and a supernatural compulsion to not. Yeah, I mean, well, honestly, like, yeah, um, you could investigate deeper into any of the supernatural factions, but if you investigate too deep, obviously, you'll run into someone who doesn't like you very much and will decide to try and off you. So. Yep. Yep. You'll bump into, like, a fucking death bone or uh Yeah, it's not necessarily, you know, even that you can't find out this stuff. It's just that you'll probably piss someone off in your investigations. Yep. Because you don't know how their world works. Pissing people off during investigations is my job. <laughs> um. You know what I think would be a really, really cool concept for a campaign? What's up? Is if there was open warfare between the factions. Like, just, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that makes so, it. Like an uh, like like think like literally, you know, all off in the literally like I thought of the open warfare, but before the the movie clicked, but it, like underworld. Yeah, like there was an a, like a hidden under fucking just open warfare between the, the factions, and there was alliances and. Yep. And, yep. And, and, and that's uh, that that's actually how uh, classic World of Darkness really operated. Um, hmm. the, 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 the core premise of, uh, Classic World of Darkness was that it, it's, uh, as a mage player, I'm going to explain it from the mage's perspective. You had your traditionalist mages and your technocratic mages, uh, mage. and there was a, there was a struggle over, uh, consensus, which is the most powerful belief that, that is held by the majority of humanity over how reality works, because that's how you controlled magic, and, well, basically the techno the technocracy is one. Uh, and then you have werewolves who are xenophobic as fuck because werewolves were the berserking warriors for Gaia. Uh, they were the claws and teeth of Gaia in a losing battle against a corrupted, uh, a corrupted balance of nature. Um, and then you had the vampires, which were explicitly uh, tainted creatures by werewolf standards, and since werewolves just, you know, attack anything they don't understand anyways, that was easy enough to do. Werewolves and mages tend to stay out of each other's paths, uh, and then you had changelings who were tied up in both mages and werewolf stuff, but the Fey were a capricious and, and kind of dangerously mysterious faction that were more childlike than anything else. And it was very much all of the factions were very uh, at odds with each other and with themselves. Uh, and it was very, but it, it was executed very poorly because the books weren't written with that intent from the get go. And that's kind of what the games evolved into over several editions. And even then, like, the rules never really matched up, and shit was fucking pain in the ass. That, like, Wad Soup was really awful. Uh, yeah. it, it, was a, it was a dry and bitter dish without a lot of reworking and, uh, and storytelling, storyteller fiatting everything. Whereas I, just, is, I think that would be really like interesting. Like, like, you could also have, like... Like not only just open warfare between the different like main like major factions, but then you have like obviously you know every faction has its own little sub factions. Yep. So there's warfare between them as well. Like there's yeah. internal conflicts I, and 
I ran a I ran a I ran a werewolf game that was a lot like that, where there was a, a council where the leader of the vampires, the leader of the fae, the a representative of the of the magi, and the the biggest alpha wolf in town would agree to not step on each other's fucking toes. Uh, and there was a lot of interpolitical conflict and subtle uh, subtle warfare going on between the factions, even underneath the council's iron grip. Uh, and it was it was pretty good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be fun to play though. Yeah, like, be, where be, like if you're playing cool. as a mage, like you have to constantly not only be on the lookout for you know other mages of different factions, but then you have to be on the lookout for like vampires may come out of nowhere. Yep. And you're like, oh fuck me, oh, bitch! <laughs> I convert moonlight to sunlight. Fuck you, people. <laughs> Same. Uh, Mage game sounds like it'd be a fun game to play. Oh, ma- I, 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 Mage is my game. Mage is awesome. Ma- Matt, Matt and I are diehard Mage, Mage players. Uh, I love, I love, love Mage. Yep. Um, Me and too. Uh, at some point, I would love to run a Mage thing. Uh, I just can't commit to running more games right now. <laughs> uh, and I don't, I, I don't, I don't see Darkness Rising. Uh, losing steam anytime soon yeah i don't know this story is just getting started kiddos we just finished the third adventure the the the, we just had our first major moment of character evolution oh 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 hang on oh yeah so there was changes to levi's character sheet as well mostly in term in the form of additions which you will got to see it next week because you know if if optical's not going to share why the fuck should i i did share mine we did actually oh (laughs) <laughs> i think you were gone actually he might have been so why don't you share matt all right fine so i picked up empathic healing which means i take damage to get rid of other people's damage and i picked up dark sight which i don't know exactly what that does but you know yeah there so Levi will now not be just the Hulk. He'll also be something else. Levi's powers uh, at the start of the next adventure. They've will evolved. Have, uh, will have evolved, yeah. Now I have three attacks instead of just the one. I've got four. I've got one more to go before I max out and then have to evolve to a new Pokemon farm. True. Ooh. Oh, God. Are there, uh, are there any more questions about the game, like, in general? Uh, for any of the players in specific, or... Uh, <laughs> we can find out after these messages, right? Because it's almost top of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we are gonna take our top of the hour break here, and uh, if folks have any questions, hold them till we get back, uh, and uh, and we'll see if there's like it. Can, it can even be like stuff about how the game is run, or the rules of the game, or like anything that goes on behind the scenes, or or any of that nonsense. And we'll try and get your answers to you as best we can without spoiling plot information. So don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. After these messages, if I can figure out where the fuck the thingy with the button went, and uh, we're gonna use this as our loading screen here. The thingy with the thing. By the way, now you need to change the tool tips to say, uh, uh, by the late Tanya Louder. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. True. Alright, I'll be right back. What are you doing? Are you... What? I'm muting you. Actually, I'm muting you. I'm not going to get a break. I'm right.
right. So, I have my hot chocolate. Nice. Nice. All right, and uh, and this is this is just general Q and A, not necessarily targeted at anybody. But if you got a person specific question, feel free. Um, it's not like a prolonged fart. It okay. did not. I have sparkling ice uh, made by Talking Rain. I've got right. so I've got moon midnight moonshine. Distilled, King. Distilled what would you from say the biggest differences between NWOD and D and D? Let's start with that one. Matt already gave his answer in text. I did. Um, okay. Uh, the core I can differences. give it again. I'd be happy to give core it again. Differences. I'm actually going to disagree with Matt as that being the core difference. So, Matt, go ahead and verbally answer that question. Okay, me, well, in my opinion, and to be fair, I mean, I'm more experienced with 3.5 than I am with 5 at 5th edition. I've only just started hearing about 5th edition. But, you know, D&D 3.5 at least is very concerned with tactical gameplay and killing monsters and stuff, and it's not as concerned with narrative. Like, you can, you can easily fit narrative in there, but it, you know, when Gygax designed it, it was about get in, kill all the monsters, get all the loot, get back out. And Enwad is very much more about the story that's being told than it is about than it All is right. about that. So, so, so uh, Matt, what Matt's addressing is effectively the idea that uh, the mechanics of New World of Darkness are laid out in such a fashion as to uh, take even players who don't know how to roleplay and are simply in it to win and max out their stats and and and, and beat the bad guys and get their rewards. Uh, the system. Munchkins came from D and D players. Uh, Just saying. No, the Munchkins came from Chainmail players. Uh, <laughs> so there. Uh, but the, the the mechanics of the New World of Darkness system are such that players taking actions that are character-driven and, and, uh, and story-impactful are mechanically rewarded with more XP, and there is a definite system in place. For example... Uh, Jack, Jack, up until very recently, has been has been striving to take actions which epitomize his archetypical tropes. Because by taking those actions, he earns himself extra XP. Um, or players He's just terrible at it. Players volunteer to botch, uh, and gain beats, for it, uh, and gain extra XP for it. I love botching, um, personally. The, the, the mechanically speaking, the core difference is that NWOT is a lot more rules light. The rules are designed to stay out of your way, and they are intended to be ignored, uh, like legitimately ignored. Preparing a session of World of Darkness requires knowing three stats for every monster. End of story. Um, you don't need stat blocks. You don't have highly complex character sheets. But I won't say that World of Darkness does not focus on the tactical nature of combat. Uh, the rules for miniatures and 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 uh, and map based combat combat is all there. We just don't use those rules. Uh, there is a speed stat that controls how far you can move, and there are a lot of fighting style uh, merits which impact the combat rules so that your character's flavor can come out. However, what I will say is that in its design, it's not as thorough or as robust or as balanced. The, uh, the main thing that I've noticed being, because I, I this is the first WOD game that I've played. Um, and I've been, I was mainly a D&D &D player. And the, the big difference to me, honestly, and it's, it's just like I said, is that in D&D, &D, it's mainly, there's not much role play in it. Like there's some, you can mix it in for flavor, but it's mainly about, the combat like yeah, you know there are rules for for movement between cities and, and things like that but they're not taken into account it's like okay you guys you know just for the sake of time you guys are going to travel and then you're going to hit this encounter okay now we're in battle and that's it whereas with wad there's a lot more it's all focused on the role play it's yeah, the, 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 the system itself is more targeted towards the roleplay. I'll give you that. See, I don't like the yeah. idea, I don't like the thought that, that like, D&D &D isn't about the roleplay because the long and short of it is the roleplay is entirely between the players and has nothing to do with the game that you're playing. Well, yeah, I mean, um, it's it's a tabletop. Like, as a tabletop game, there is roleplay. It is there. It is a major, it well, is a well, I mean, not, I mean, you, you can play both D&D &D and World of Darkness without roleplaying, and you can play both D&D &D and World of Darkness with roleplaying, and what, what I mean here isn't to say that, like, it's a, it's a natural part of the, of the tabletop gaming experience. What I mean is, it's quite possible to roleplay with no system at all. 
right? Without yeah. without there being a specific game, and and the, the role play is independent of the system. I know, I, I like you're not wrong. D and D's focus, like what what it, what is expected from a D and D game and what's expected from a World of Darkness game, are two very different things because the rules do incentivize different. Uh, activities and they're focused yeah, around the, different activities. Well, what I was talking about was the was the was the, the systems in themselves, like their uh, way their rules, the the way the character sheets are laid out, the way the you know the, yep. the dice rolls, the dice that you use. It's it's more catered towards role play and what than in yeah, yeah totally. It's uh, and and, and it's it's uh it's the the new world of darkness system is more narratively minded. There's more storytelling tools. Uh, whereas Man, I should in, try and run D and D tonight. In world in D and D, it's more it's more uh, it, the rules are less concerned with the narrative and, and more concerned about the win and lose. Right, where you know you pass your checks, you have your DCs, you have your ACs and your hit points and so on and so forth. Uh, and I say it's more concerned about the win and rules, win and lose, because the D and D rule set has a reliable system of probability behind it. Every plus one versus your DC is five percent. Yeah. Uh, the World of Darkness system is so not reliable. You can have spiked out crazy rolls, both good and bad, no matter how high or low your stats are. In D&D, if you've got plus 20 to a skill, the minimum you could ever perform is a 21, and that's not an automatic failure. In uh, World of Darkness, you could have the maximum possible score and still completely and utterly fail. Like a, like yeah, a total That's nigger. the other thing, is that the system, the the way the dice system runs is the, it's more randomized in in World of Darkness. It gives you an advantage to have a bonus, but it just gives you an advantage to your to your role to your randomness. Like yeah, as I said in the chat, like you can figure out a general average, but yeah, there is that's that, that it's, it's, su it's, it's super it's super unreliable. Um, in, in answer to Robovin's question, uh, the D and D sheet you have a long list of skills and you have uh, six attributes. And you're rolling 1d20 plus modifiers comparing to a target number. The World of Darkness sheet is everything on the sheet is rated from 1 to 5. So if I ask him, let's let's say he wants to quickly come up with a baseball strategy for this yeah, game. Yeah, but there's right? still there's still nine attributes. There's a list of skills. There's yeah, numbers. No, but it's still, any no, of it's that stuff. It's, it's entirely different. different. The, the scales the scales are different that are used they're used much differently because for example in D and D you could have like you could have no ranks in a skill all the way up to twenty ranks in a skill. Uh, yeah. And in, yeah, in but fifth this... in fifth that even goes out the window. There's only three levels of proficiency if I recall. Okay, um, I'd like to clarify. I'm going with what going he with literally. What, well, I'm going with that, and I'm going with what he literally said, which is what is how different are they and how, how they're the character laid out. sheets are laid out. Effectively, the idea Robovin is that uh, the character sheet of of uh, the character sheet in D and D is a list of things that your character can do. The character sheet in World of Darkness is meant to be a more accurate representation of the character as a person. Um, and it, it, that's not to say that D and D sheets don't represent your character as a person. It's that if your character used to own a pet when he was a kid, you might have one dot in Animal Ken. Um, and in uh -huh. because of the way the World of Darkness system works, you're not like you can't optimize World of Darkness. It doesn't happen. There's no yeah. optimal performance rating because the system doesn't re like it. It 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 rewards high stats with more dice, but that's literally it. And and furthermore, even those high stats are not enough to make you perform any better or worse than a fucking fresh level one character because the dice are so fucking unreliable. Yeah, no, by the way, Hitachi, uh he's still getting the actual community working. Yeah, it's it's still it's still coming together, but this there, is a there perfect least... opportunity to mention it because not this coming Monday, but yeah. the Monday after that, Nerd is born anew. We're having the talk About show on this channel. Fucking time. It's, wait, it's what? I didn't I didn't catch all of that because the podcast Optical is coming. Not not Monday. Not this Monday, but the Monday after that. Uh, there was a tweet that I made on uh, the, the the nerd community handle, which I'll dig up right here. Boom. Uh, this is, okay, this is four days ago I tweeted this. Click. Boom. Bam. Check that out. Nerd community. You see the words nerd and community in there? That means there is a community. Matt, shut up and click the link. Nerd. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can, uh, if I, I can just show trying to off. answer the question, you know, uh, window be helpful or, and stuff in a or, condescending way, sort of, okay, not really, yeah. I mean. 
You know how it is. It's all bluster just to cover up my insecurities. Ah. Uh, Cry. There we go. This is this is. I've, I've got it up on stream now. Have what That's up on the tweet. Stream. Okay. Um, this is all my work. I did this. Uh, did this from scratch for myself. Oh, hey, look at that. That's that's like pencils and graph paper shit right there. That's cool. Yeah, isn't it? Except it's covering my face, so I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> but that is, uh, that is in the works, so coming next Monday. Not next Monday. Monday after next. Monday after this Monday. Yeah, next Monday, not this Monday. Words. Uh, the nerd community will be, the forums will be launched the day of that, uh, that, that podcast will be the moment where I... Flip the switch and make the forums go public. Forums! Awesome! I didn't even know there was going to be forums. Are you sure we want to let all of these viewers onto the is forums? Is that Comic so Sans? Can... No, that is not Comic Sans. <laughs> I, I've never really understood why Comic Sans is so hated. It's a bad form. Man, Shut up. It, I, it's a terrible form. Like, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just don't understand why it's that, considered a bad form. You are the form. person who still uses the Twitter egg. Because you don't understand what it means when I tell you, get a fucking picture for your goddamn No, I understand handle. that. You, I just don't know you how. You unesthetic fuck. I don't know how. Oh, well, find a picture. Well, I don't know how. You, you can use the Googles and find a picture. There's the Googles? I'm going to dump it. Yeah, you. you used it to Google shortbushes.com. You get, remember? I did? You did. No, yeah, I don't yeah. remember. I, fat, I was drinking then. I don't He's remember. He's in denial. He's in denial. It's great for dyslexics. See, you want to get dyslexics in your gaming community. They're all that's about true. The, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to discriminate against them all, dyslexics. What's they're good? all about the bad maths. You should be fired. <laughs> you're a, you're a bad person. Um, but that is that is okay. the new community is coming out soon. Uh, and we I have we have a launch date now, so we I can be late like and apologize. Uh, like so now we have a, a date by which we can be late and then issue a public apology. And for uh, math. oh, and then you can delay. Yeah, then we could delay. Like you we, can delay the release, and then you have to push it back again. Uh, oh, and then oh. again, and then you have to say we're pushing it back at, uh, like a fifth time because we want to make sure everything's perfect. I have a yeah. question. When you set up the forum, can I have a thread dedicated simply to me apologizing to everyone for everything I've ever done? Yes. Uh, awesome. um, okay, so uh, among the forums, well, basically there, there's gonna be there's gonna be a there's gonna be a general discussion out of character forum for anybody, right? There's gonna be a forum where if there is text on this board, it is going to be in character. In whatever game you guys are playing on that board, if it's just like free freestyle, free form, if it's D and D play by post, whatever, you, like all of that shit is going to be in character. It's going to be an in character role playing board. There's going to be a board looking for group, so that if you want to get a group together, say you're looking for some uh, some some roll twenty Pathfinder, or you want to do some one shots, you're looking to get a part of a game or whatever. There's going to be a forum for you guys. There's also going to be a forum specifically for the discussion of nerd games such as nerds and dragons if you wanted to talk to the players there or the dm there about that game or 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 talk fan theories about the story of darkness rising etc etc get some questions and hammer out some theories and stuff there's going to be a forum specifically for the discussion of nerd content from nerd content creators it'll also be a great place for you guys to get in contact with the nerd content creators such as myself and suddenly ducks uh, I'd like to point out also, you know, we encourage more people to start streaming role playing stuff. We have a date. We all... Wait, do we have a date for a public apology release then? Yes. The date for the public apology uh, for. Monday after next. Yeah, it's Monday after next. That's when Matt's public apology goes live. Oh, no, no, no. no. The public apology from Nerd is the Monday. Following. After, is the week after the, the official launch. Yeah, yeah. The, so, so basically, the official launch is late, and then a week after the official launch being late, we have a public apology. Right? Yep. Yeah. And then a week after that is Matt's official apology. Maybe. Because <laughs> I might have to apologize for not having an apology ready. Yeah, no, like, it'll, it'll be a while. <laughs> it'll definitely be a while. Uh, I can see that. But Matt's public apology, like, thread is just going to be, I'm sorry, I'm working on my apology. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't. You have no idea. Like I had no idea when I signed up for this project, just how much, how much work goes into like actually sounding sincere. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'll have this right. next time. So, so, uh, so, do we have any questions from the audience about, uh, about the like the behind the scenes of Darkness Rising, or like the uh, the, the way that the, like, Hipster, the I think you said you you say pubic too much. I, that, that is that is what happens. Actually, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with saying pubic a whole lot. If you say a word frequently enough, then it'll start the the autocorrect will start to assume that that's the word you're looking for. Matt's very proud to have figured out a small aspect of technology. But toasters are still beyond me. Toasters, it's it's a, like he. Uh, Dude, has, shit. Has, it, has anybody not played? I tell you what, world, though, has anybody not played or seen the Old World Blues DLC for Fallout Three? I, I haven't. Toasters I, want to nuke the world. They I want, I want to, to burn out. the world in a fiery death. Toasted food is the food of the future. I look forward to finally figuring out how to you know get my hands <laughs> on that shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, it, hold on. I, gotta, I know there's a meme of it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I apologize for I'm still making apologies again. I'm so sorry. We're just going to rename uh, Matt into Boxy and just call it a night. Boxy? What? Point, points to anybody I should in the really be replacing Fred Gallagher on the internet. If anyone gets that reference, say it right now because I'll be impressed. Fred Here, Gallagher. I need a permit. Somebody permit me. With Roll20, if you pay, do all of your players have to pay to get their characters? No. No! Uh, no, no, no. God, no. I actually, uh, Matt doesn't pay a dime because Matt's a cheap fuck. I pay for my Roll20 subscription, uh, and you get, uh, like, you well, get wait, the ability to create how much, a character How much sheet. is your Roll20 subscription? Uh, it is a, a certain amount of money that I'm, I don't discuss money really in detail on stream because that's real. No, but tell me how much it is for the, for a month. We'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. Um, Just saying, because, you know, got the doze. Okay, suddenly. so, uh, optical. I have a new command, all right? If you type hype mark chair, it'll permit you. That's lies. I saw prove, you make that command. Prove me. Prove me wrong. Prove it. I was there when prove you it. made the command. It prove will it. purge me. You can't just, like, falsely accuse me of stuff without evidence. Bullshit. That's true, actually. I you was there when you made the command. Because I remember you were like, it's not purging people. Hold on. <laughs> and you had to fix it. You actually can't accuse him without, you know, evidence. Because it's proven guilty until it found innocent. No, wait. Sorry, other round, way around. Proving, you were proven guilty until found innocent? Uh, it's actually you are innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> Whatever. Innocent until proven guilty. And Whatever. I would know. He didn't, he didn't lie. Not talk about the Steve Dojo proved it for me. <laughs> Dojo, there. Dojo talked about the chair and it. <laughs> there, proof. Dojo is. There. Yeah. You go. He will not get time there. to death. I can't believe you fell for that. 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 <laughs> wow. Okay. That's funny. I didn't even look like Dojo. There are actually. Oh wait, I'm still. Ba I'm still so. timed out. Wait, maybe I'm not. Hold on. You, no, the truth is out be. there. Illuminati. There we go. Just one eye and a triangle like this. Uh, okay. So does the do do uh do, does the audience have any requests for stuff they would like to see explored in future adventures? Yes! I would love to hear this from the audience. Seriously, like, I love hearing new shit that we might do in the game. I, I'm always pumped for that. So start texting shit right now. Start now, damn it. <laughs> I'm not seeing any new right stuff. Now. Do it. Come on. Come on. I'm still waiting, you bastard. By the way, by I the way, I just want, I just want to say that one of the other quotes, feeling. one of the other Come quotes in the poster is, a toaster is just a death ray with a smaller power supply. As soon as I figure out how to tap into the main reactors, I will burn the world. No, you'll toast the world, you dumb fuck. No, the toaster is... is he's he's quoting something, dude. You're not gonna... Don't yell at him because somebody else's words are dumb. Jesus. Well, he should have edited them. No. Someone wants a recurring bad guy girl. I agree with Shift Stick completely because of the fact that that would actually help my vice if the bad guy girl is a uh, recur is a rich recurring villain. You know, my envy of success. And actually, <laughs> I like uh, to see someone judo chop Levi in the throat so he's quiet for once, laughing my ass off. 
I would like to see that too, just because then I would Hulk and out and kill that person and then real, real back quick. speaking like normal. Matt, actually, oh, that's not wrong because the heating element it lights shit on fire. Stick a piece of paper against the toaster's heating element. It's not going to toast. It's going to light on fucking fire. You'll notice how so I, it's going to burn. You'll notice how I judo chop Levi in the throat there. <laughs> I, I totally just judo chop Levi in the throat. Now he can't talk. <laughs> See how that works? A recurring bad guy girl. All right, shift six, shift six. So basically, what you're saying is like the, the like the the virtues, uh, a more specific NPC. I could do that. Will we at some point go deeper into the backstories of the characters? I uh, in answer to that, Whipper King. Yes, there is actually gonna. You know how like TF dude is like meet the scout, meet the medic, meet the heavy. Now that I'm not moving anymore, I'm gonna be meeting with the players to have character videos that are more like meet Jack. Meet Levi, meet uh, Axel. I was gonna start with Tanya, but well. <laughs> um, and Wyvern, actually, I believe, uh, Squeezer, I think you talked about doing it, like specific episodes that were focused around different characters. Yeah, yeah I, I, the, the only reason I haven't like super made an episode about a character hardcore and exact like that, like second episode could be said to be very much about Levi because the main scenario that was going on was a reflection of levi it was a rich character whose business had fallen apart who had a power that he couldn't control and a little sister uh and it was an example of what could happen if things went very poorly for levi uh but that's not really an episode about levi it's an episode inspired by levi uh and i what i want to do is i do want to have episodes that are very much specifically about the history of each character and the daily lives of each character but i wanted to wait until the players had gelled together and we had played for a solid amount of time so that it didn't really just come off as early on in the games something focusing entirely on one person right like by this point i feel like the players and characters are a lot more uh are a lot more well gelled and like they the PCs are no longer like I, I've worked out the relationship between the GM and the players here, and there isn't any. There's 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 not going to be like a lot of tension if say Jack goes most of a session without having much on screen time because it, he has no place there during that element during that point in the story because Optical is now like he's seen it happen, he's comfortable, he knows his turn will come around, and it's not even a concern. What naming scheme will I pick from episode eight and onwards? Uh... That depends entirely on if the PCs actually manage to handle the threat of the virtues. If not, I might I might make the naming convention something along the lines of prudence again. Or justice again. again. Uh we are however halfway Shut through. up and take my money. Whoa. You know what's really funny though. God Wait. damn it! Hold on, Robovin just donated fifty dollars and now uh now I have to like I have to massage my tits for Robo on camera. I'm not massaging my tits. Well, he didn't donate $50 to you, though, did he? You're right, he didn't. Thank you for the donation, though, Robovin. I really appreciate it. Um, The other thing is is that and it's funny that you actually brought up backstories because there, I can tell you, like, I know that there is things that I've worked out with Squeege when we made Jack. Yep. That there are things that have not come to light about his backstory and yep. about his, his personal life. As a matter of fact, and, and don't you worry your little heads. Despite the fact that Tanya is dead, I have full intentions of exploring and incorporating that missing twin, her family, and all that stuff has not been forgotten just because Tanya is dead. That is still story relevant. Nightblade! <laughs> uh... No, I, I, there were no pasties. I'm, I'm still, I'm still safe. There was no nipple showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. I was just about to text you and tell you to unmute me, you bastard. <laughs> hey, Judo Chop takes a while to recover from, okay? <laughs> and we've had a recovering villain. We, we've had a, d which, which player character does the audience want to see delved into? Like, Ooh, everybody's going to get their question. turn, but I want to see what the audience, I know. like... Who do, who I do you guys personally, see? for me, it's Cassie. I want to see Cassie's history delved into. She's not a PC. What's your point? No, no what PC? <laughs> so, I want to know where the magical Cassie If you guys from. want more action with me and my boobs, you can hit up my YouTube channel. I actually I, stabbed I my boobs don't... with a needle. I don't Empathic think... healing only affects judo-chopped allies, not yourself. <laughs> well, 
No, if I wanted to affect myself, I would just Hulk out, and that would heal it. So that Real quick, that. Screech, how do I heal that aggravated damage? How do you feel? Uh, uh, by the start of the next adventure, enough time will pass for it to, 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 to heal. But the thing about okay. ag damage is that it's it's uh, it takes longer than any other kind of damage, and it can't be healed without the use of supernatural influence right. outside of that long time. Okay. Hang I on. See, like, Christogenesis just put up a post. I'd actually like to see, like, you know, when a character dies and becomes a sacrificial lamb, I'd like them to explore that as the characters and possibly for that to become a thing later. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what Christogenesis. Yeah, means. I'm, I'm not. I, I feel like that's that's not a full thought. Could you could you expound on what you there? with less of Matt yelling? Sorry. Um. You mean like the 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 death of the character triggering uh, a a heavy story? Because they died. That might be what that person. Is. Uh, Hitichi's, Hitichi's first vote is that Pluto's character is going to be Cassie. That's what everybody thinks. Pluto is. is... <laughs> Boy, that would be awkward. I I, I can't <laughs> deny. It. I mean, let's think about this. Pluto plays characters who sleep around all the time. So I mean, how? No, would, Pluto how played would a access? character who had sex once. You judgmental right? fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't not do that. Yeah, consequences for the other PCs. Consequences no, for the other PCs from Tanya's death are a guarantee. I will never. Uh, I will never. I'll never let us forget. I will never kill a PC without making it an integral part of the campaign story. Um, yeah. If a PC's death occurs unexpectedly, I will change my campaign story to make that character's death significant heavily. I, I wholeheartedly feel that the story should always be about the characters, and a character's death is something that, that should be important. Uh, that player, Tanya, put a lot of time in, or Pluto okay. put a lot of time into into yeah. characterizing Tanya and, and bringing Tanya, you know, closer to the hearts of us and the audience and the other characters, and to just brush it off would be disrespectful to the effort that Pluto Fairy put into playing her. It's true. And, I mean, like, like, Apparently, Jack had a crush on her or whatever, but, I mean, she definitely affected... Or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Apparently, Jack had a crush on her, but whatever. I mean, she she definitely had an effect on Levi and Axel, too. At the very least, she annoyed the hell out of Axel with all of her questions, and Levi was, you know, like, they, they, were, they were two people who got along together, and she was able to actually get him out of Hulk Rage and stuff. So, I mean, there's, there's definitely elements of that that have to be explored still, like... Yeah. Um, like, oh. th there's a reason why I, I gave Levi the dream. Dream? Yeah, the what? dream sequence before you were shaken away. Oh my god, Matt! <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. You know, the only actual scene you had today. Like, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> I'm I, sorry, I, I forgot we actually played today. No, no, I forgot. I temporarily forgot that it wasn't real. <laughs> that's, that's what happened there. I swear. <laughs> the Tanya was kind of a heart or the light of the party in terms of spiritual leadership, inspiration, and optimism. Yeah, like, uh, uh, Tanya... No, I, I disagree. Axel is clearly the heart and light of the... No, there, Axel there. is the only voice of reason in the party. That's the, that, that's there, a different there. thing. He, every time a little girl cries, there, there. There, there, little girl. It's an officer. It's an officer. It's Yeah, no, uh, 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 the, the, uh... <laughs> I, I totally agree. Like Tanya, Tanya plays a role uh, equivalent to again. Uh, I, I am very, I'm very spoiler conscious on the channel, so be careful when you go forward with this metaphor here. But I, I view Tanya is taking a role very similar to that of early Willow, like season one, season two Willow, uh, in Buffy, uh, where she was that very, she was, she was the hope, and she was, you know, she was the bright side. Uh, and and she was the she was the one who would uh, who would keep people on track, and she was the she was the one that glued the group together. Uh, Wyvern King has a question. Wyvern King, how hard is it to make sure you guys stay in character while making decisions? Honestly, I, I it it's uh, it's not very difficult for these players at all. Um, I don't think so to stay in character uh, because for two reasons. Uh, one. Uh, Pluto Fairy and 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 uh, Pluto Fairy for one, I want to I want to say is probably a really hefty driving force for the for the tone of the table and the way that we just you know we've got our in character our character like Pluto Fairy is really good at keeping things in character and presenting things to the characters, but also like from the get go we've had a very narrative play style and yep. it has been very in character. Um, Do you want us to answer that? 
question too? Yeah, yeah. The, other, yeah. the other thing is though, the other thing is, is that, and you guys, you know, the viewers don't know this, but we, we get on call an hour before we actually go live. It's true. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so we, we, we have time that we can prepare and, and we kind of talk and, and, hang out and we we get a lot of our out of character stuff out in, of yeah, this way. Out of the way. yeah. The, it, it, at my tables i i never i never i never 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 i will never play a game where the players show up at the designated time for the game um without at least at least minimum half an hour usually i want to have an hour before the game that's not just for technical setup i call it the pre-game bullshit phase because i've discovered that if you add that to the table as part of your your your, your running your game routine uh, there is much less of like the need to like get that out of character hangout and like the the, the movie references and the stupid quotes and shit. Yeah, yeah. A lot easier we still to... have that, but yeah, it's we not still as have heavy. That. It it, it yeah. it's not a problem to like grab the reins and bring them back in character when that kind of stuff right. happens because we get that out of our system ahead of time. And for me, it's you know how hard is it to stay in character uh, when I'm making decisions? Is you know, well, it, considering like this is the character these are these are his defining traits like the fact that he hulks out or the fact that he has uh no man left not no man left behind but ultimate loyalty to the party and stuff like that so yeah it's not it's not as hard as you might think it is an interesting challenge though to be somebody that's not you yeah yeah for uh, sure personally don't like deciding a character's motivation as a gm or viewer so forcing that on a player as a motivation is a bit dickish people deal with diff death in different ways yeah, but he's not expecting us to deal with death in a specific way. He's just reminding us that the death occurred, and that, yeah, no, that I, I make it, I make it a significant part. Of the, I let the players decide how their characters react. Uh, but I'm pretty yeah. certain that like the the, the 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 tone of the group, I'm capable of reading the reading the players, the characters. And we have conversations about this off panel, so I can get more detailed information from them, so I can kind of plan my stories around that. Uh, but like I. I I like, for instance, I don't know exactly how uh, Axel is going to handle this, and I'm going to talk to Pith when I get a chance to about that. But I, uh, I can make Tanya's death a central piece of the story without having to force the players to react a certain way. Like there's, Lucky, there's another Lucky thing. And the Leaflings were depending on Lucky for yeah, certain. Well, there, things. there's another thing here too. Is that the way this group is and the way the dynamic is, it we are all very good at being able to instantly go out of character and explain why the character would do what he's doing yep um well that's not even really a deviation from character in my opinion no but i mean like we, we, no what i'm saying is for instance like with the scene with jack it was you know the way i see jack this is what he would do right this is why he's doing what he's doing this yep. is why he is who he is and that's like we all do that like we all do that when it comes down to is you know so it's it's very it's not that hard at all i find it interesting honestly i'm gonna say this right now is i find it interesting that everybody's interested in axel's backstory when nothing of jack has ever been revealed <laughs> <laughs> but we expect that we expect that of jack um uh, part of that is is uh is jack's mysteriousness is is what we have learned to accept as a core of the character that's not to say that his backstory wouldn't be interesting it'll be interesting to see it go out i think part of why people are mentioning axel's backstory is that we have seen a lot of like we know some of back axel's backstory but we don't have the whole picture right yeah. there, there are missing pieces and that kind of drives people there's to just enough to, to make you go wait I would actually would like to see some focus on Axel, to be honest. Like, I feel like I have a lot of sense of him as a character aside from he's a cop. Though it may possibly be because it's been a while since he had focused on such a leave by Tanya Jack. Uh, uh, can I interject just real quick? Like, what a lot of what I've gotten from Axel is he's the guy who's... He's, he's like the one sane man. You know, he's the one who always insists that everything is normal or as normal yeah, as can he's, be. Yeah, he's always And will like try to revert to normal as quickly as possible after the weird shit has hit the fan. I'm, Sorry, in, I'm interested. To see, I'm interested to hear Pitt's take on that as well. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you one thing about one thing about Axel that I'm interested in is to see what hit more of like what his day to day life is and how it's changed since everything's happened. Yep. You know, like at, like in between episodes, kind of thing. Like, that would be interesting to find out. Um, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like that's that's pretty on point, Jack. And it'd be interesting to see that for anybody, honestly, anybody in the group, like to see how their their characters actually handle it between the episodes, like. They go back to their, you know, they go back to their their lives. I mean, Jack doesn't really have a, a life. But if one of Pitt's sticks wasn't the fact that he pretends his camera was frozen, 
maybe you'd know more about this character. <laughs> uh, 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 Axel, uh, like, Pith, Pith is, uh, as a player, I find, he's the one that is most likely to just quietly await a turn to talk instead of, like, yeah. really reaching and grabbing it. Jumping in. So, like, uh, to that end, like, part of why he doesn't talk much is because I'm not... Uh, as as the ref of the table, as the like part of the job is my job as the GM is to make sure everybody gets their chance to talk and kind of like control the flow of the play. Uh, I need to like force Matt to shut up more often so Levi can talk, basically. Uh, yeah, the other thing, by the way, force shift, Matt to so, shut up so Levi can talk. How does that work? I mean, so the other, the other thing talk. is though, shift is that <laughs> there's a lot of like I actually do a lot of talking with with Squeegee in whispers. Yeah. Like I'll generally send him what Jack would do. Yeah, we, we 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 had a talk like we had a discussion about that but like we're like we're gonna we're gonna rely less on the whispers and more on the narratives so the audience gets to see those as well um and and like there, there there's there's a couple of things like it, it it's important to realize that this game isn't just a game it's a show like yep. most yeah. tabletop role playing games don't have uh, a collection of twenty or thirty people watching uh and and it's not a concern for. Uh, like, it, it's a concern. I, I like to consider it a concern that, like, you guys get a good show as well as we get a good game. And I won't sacrifice a good game for a good show. Like, that goes against oh, man. everything I imagine. I, I love the idea that I have an audience and that I can give them a good time by giving them a good something something awesome to watch. Yeah, but but at the same time, like, even though I, I refuse to sacrifice the quality of my game for the quality of the show, there are things I can do to improve the show for the audience that I might not do at a normal table. Uh, like at a normal table, a player like a player like Optical who's playing a character like Jack, I've 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 run It'd games where like he never talks at all, and almost every action he declares is sent through a note to the GM, and that's perfectly fine at the table, right? Like you at, at a table, you might split the party up here or there uh, to bring somebody aside and run something for them, um, but I don't do that here yet. I'm 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 looking for I'm looking for ways to like cut sound off to particular players or like something I can do so that they, you know, so that only one person can see what that person might see in moments where I want to surprise the whole group, but tell somebody ahead of time, whatever. Um, but for the most part, like, uh, like Pith talking is one of those things that I'm conscious of because uh, his character is part of the show and he's one of, he's one of the actors on that show. Uh, and the audience deserves to hear what's going through his head as much as they deserve to hear everybody else's. And who doesn't love hearing that super cop rasp? Seriously. I love it when I, I love when somebody has a voice for the character. I I wish that I had thought to come up with a voice for Levi before, but now I find myself uh, just tempted to copy <laughs> Axel's voice. What you need to do is talk like this exclusively when you're holding. See, out. but Levi is clearly not a feminist. I just noticed you zoomed in the camera. You just noticed. <laughs> what? Look at the stream. Oh my god. Uh, I don't know if it'll load fast enough. Zo oh, zoomed in axles. Yeah. Camera. Okay, nice. <laughs> Look at that face. A giant square face. Right. Um. So, so the audience. Who could not love that? The audience for me wants to see a recurring villain. They want to see uh a a adventures that really explore. I've the told you I want to see a recurring. You know, villain. actually, you know what? I am going to be exploring this next adventure. Does reveal the next adventure? I can I can totally I can totally tease the next adventure. The next adventure will reveal a lot of uh the questions the characters and and the audience have regarding powers. The origins Say of those what? powers. The next adventure will reveal. What? Uh, the next adventure will reveal a lot of information about the about the uh, the virtues, and it uh, it will it will introduce, or it will reintroduce a character that has been seen before, uh, and relevant before. No, are you saying wait. Joe is coming back because? Wait, 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 wait. Can I threw please? Joe into the no, pits of anti hell. Not Joe. Can we please have the old man with the pit stains back? <laughs> that is Joe. That was, that was Joe. Joe. That was Joe, yeah. We threw him into the pits of anti hell. No, hold up, hold up, hold up, back. hold up, hold up, shut up. There was no we here. Okay. You threw him in the pits of anti hell, you son of a bitch. And that's why I would like him to not come back. <laughs> I would be Well, so you deserve what you get. You made your bed, you sleep in it, you. 
fucking I, junk throwing I son would of a be bitch. Super pissed to come back to see someone come back or to come back from anti hell and see all those assholes that threw me in walking around still. I don't want that to happen to me. But he called me on the phone and I still haven't gotten to tell you. Well, I am. I am. Wouldn't have, if you wouldn't have thrown Joe. I've tried telling Jack and Axel, hey, I got a phone call from Jack. That's fucking weird. Maybe we should all hide under our beds. But no. nobody <laughs> is <listens to> Levi. <laughs> I ain't hiding from shit. He's after you. You killed him. You helped. No, I didn't. You were there. That's I told enough. you no. <laughs> I you was hawked out. Anyway. I didn't know it better. You weren't hulked out. You were half hulked out. I you knew what you were doing. You, you, no, I, when I hulked like out, it's see... only one arm anyways. So. Okay, what you'd like to say, what you kind of want is an in-character recap, Dojel. Uh, please define what you mean by an in-character recap. Uh, and oh, Robo no, I get it. Like, okay, so and, we and, would and, be in-character. Like, like, basically, Jack would be like, okay, so I was sleeping. Like, I woke up and I had, I had a text. Or I got a message from Faith. So I had to go find her. So he I had, had to go find her. Too. And as I went, you know, like in character, like in a, like a recap of, of everything that happened from their perspective. He had a tattoo. No, I didn't. New uh, Outworld Mafia okay. led by Joe. And what Robo is an Vin, Outworld Mafia? You'd like to see interaction with the relevant characters to the players a bit more. What do you mean by relevant characters? Oh, you mean like, oh, you mean like, uh, like Cassie and Elsa and, uh, and Mikey. And, uh, I, I was going to say Ouroboros. But Tanya's dead. Who was Ouroboros? Ouroboros was uh, one of Tanya's relevant NPCs. That was the lesbian whose oh, couch she was crashing. Do you mean Ouroboros? Oh, you mean Aurora Borealis. Yeah. Wow, you Ouroboros. butchered the fuck out of that name. I did, whatever. <laughs> NPCs all look the same to me. <laughs> Can we please have Mini Mike yes. come back too? Mini Mike was awesome. Mini Mike was <laughs> great. I loved him. I want him to come back so bad. You know what my favorite NPC was? I'll give you a hint. My favorite NPC can't come back. He's dead. Oh, I know who. I know oh, who it is. The guy from Graphite Airplane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, the tr rubber tree. Was, you killed uh, him. You have the choice. Rubber tree. I don't feel bad for it. Or river tree. Yeah, it was uh, with this guy, bro. You know, like, uh, <laughs> and he was. Uh, Throws the beard, you man, and be like, uh, "Why you yeah, spilled my you beard?" Know, like, with the Googles. Uh, yeah. That guy. I, I miss that guy. I recorded a few albums. You look around, there's a shitload of Platinums plastered to the wall. <laughs> and fuck you. <laughs> fuck you, rich guy. You stupid graphite airplane. Fuck. Um, okay, so yeah, no, we, we, to we totally... Uh, it's definitely not like Aurora Borealis. At least Krista knows what word I was fucking using. Um, no, oh, I knew what I you were using, it. but I'm like, I, I was like, I don't know what character you're talking yeah. about. Like, yeah, no. It was... um, so, so uh, as far as those NPCs, those NPCs can totally be made more relevant. They will need to be made Levi more relevant. Levi might have an explosion. outer dimension um, mafia coming after him, but I don't see why. I mean, that's not a big Please. deal. Your favorite NPC was Stupid Police. Which one was that, Dojil? Oh, that would probably be Tom and Jerry. Or it could have been the lady from the, uh... How much I... <laughs> Hello, Officer Axel! I, I can't oh, do it. Oh, Sally. Sally. <laughs> yeah, Sally, the police receptionist. Hey, Axel! <laughs> oh, my How are God. You again? It just gets more hypnotizing every time he does it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some information? <laughs> she would keep Here's extra files thing. in her bra. That's just the natural place to put them. Hold on. Oh, wait. Wrong one side. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no. The one in short bushes. Do you mean the little lady you with... Mean the uh, little Hispanic lady that went no, after she's fucking... Not Hispanic. Axel. She's, she's of an... She's of an... Axel, like, would you like some information, Axel? <laughs> she's not a Hispanic Axel. lady. She's a lady of indiscretion indeterminate origin like she went after levi with a rolling pin she's clearly oh. not white but we don't know what oh, she mean, is uh, uh you mean the what mysterious, you call me you the, call me short you mean, what you call me you mean the uh the angry you leave you leave now yeah the indiscriminate nationality mate oh my gosh she was amazing 
But I'm so glad she's gone. Well, actually, she's not dead, is she? She oh, actually survived. Dead. Yeah, she, it, it wasn't her house that was... Uh... Shit, she's gonna come back. Yeah, she's gonna Fuck fucking hunt me. you down, Levi. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna make a fuck. She's gonna like make a fucking tag team with uh with Helga and just fucking hunt you down. Oh, yeah, she's coming at you with that what fucking what I da, 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 da. You what you call me? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you good sir are straight up fucked. Why is it I can only attract ladies who I would never want to deal with in real life? Because uh. <laughs> You don't want to deal with things in real life. <laughs> uh, um, although I'm, I'm very curious now uh, because we're talking about Helga and the, uh, and the obscure nationality made. What do you mean attract ladies? <laughs> <laughs> they are the ones who come after me. That's all I mean by that. Inter I, inter like, indeterminate nationality I, made confirmed for fortitude. <laughs> Oh, she'll definitely be coming back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's not temperance, that's for sure. But I sure as hell couldn't, like, move her out of the way or stop her from coming after me with that rolling pin. So, yeah, that could actually be she's fortitude. I'm willing to buy that. That's canon for me now. I'll give you a canon, all right. All right, so I'll if, show you, Cannon. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, to have a last call here for questions from the audience. I want to polish your cannon. A last call here for questions from the audience. Any questions at all about the game, the players, anything? No, load it and fire it with a uh, nice long... If, if nobody Can we asks, just shut him up forever? <laughs> yeah. And just yeah, we make him roleplay through text? Yeah. <laughs> well, look, he writes a pretty solid post. I'll give him that. If you don't like the <laughs> fact that I roleplay better than you, Ooh. You can leave. I'm sorry, wait, who are you again? <laughs> Shoots feared. <laughs> feared? Oh, oh, fired. Oh, well, that was me. I wait, was how do you roleplay better than me? You don't shut up to let other people roleplay. That's how. You got it. <laughs> Nailed it in one. <laughs> if no one else roleplays, then they can't roleplay better than me. <laughs> That's how that works. Inspired by yourself, Squeege. You feel like there's a character in your story based on or loosely inspired by yourself. It was the guy from Graphite Airplane. <laughs> I am actually a maid of indeterminate nationality. No, I actually haven't done that, uh, Robo. The only character that I can say is like, because when I'm playing a character, I don't, I don't play characters inspired by uh, myself or people. I'll do characters inspired by, uh, inspired by like other comic characters or whatever uh the closest For instance, I've, Jarvis the closest I've ever come to playing a character who was inspired by myself uh was remainder who was yeah he, he doesn't know nothing was... about him he's an NPC from my Sunday mage game that I don't broadcast uh and he wasn't even inspired by me he With was just one that I could really relate to because he was supposed to be he started off as a relevant NPC to one of the players it was it was his character's uh little brother. And so I was playing an annoying little brother, and well, I mean, fuck, if I can't play an annoying little brother, I don't know what I can play. <laughs> because after all, Grant in real life is an annoying little brother. Is the explosion at the diner, etc., reported in the papers, and if so, what is the in-universe media spin on it if it's not spoilers? It's not spoilers. Fantastic question. Um, gas leak. I, I specifically set it up so that it wouldn't be true. It would look like yeah, it would look like a gas leak. Uh, and but the even without that, leak. like, there's no report of is there a report of death in the papers or anything like that? Well, there were no bodies. There were no bodies. There was a crazy guy that got blown up in the gas station. Oh no, there was a body. Yeah, there so was they, a body. They, they assume he's a sleeping bum. Uh, what hasn't shown up in the papers? What hasn't what? shown what up was in the with papers? The smile? Uh oh. Is the pile of bodies and murders in the museum? Oh uh, wait, that hasn't shown up in the papers at all. No, nor will it have shown up in the papers by the time. The okay, so starts. the explosion we can write off as Jack actually managed to be clever for once. The bodies for in once, the motherfucker. The, the bodies in the museum, on the other for hand. For once, motherfucker. I'm pretty certain <laughs> Jack's you plan. Grudge against him because he won't tell you shit. I, I, I'm pretty certain that Jack's plan to get you to drive headlong into a wall was pretty clever. Hey, I volunteered for that. That's why it was so clever. <laughs> it's like, yeah. 
No, I no, literally it, just looked at the on. car, looked at the wall, and then walked away. And you're like, I'm gonna hey, do that. Hey, for people who are for people who are speculating on the plot, though, if the bodies in the museum were not reported in the news when the explosion was, who's covering our asses? Cuffs can't be traced, Ojo. The cop, the cuffs are uh, <coughs> cuffs probably melted. Yeah. What probably. melted? Yeah, the cuffs. Yeah, handcuffs. You guys cuffed a guy what to the fucking gas station and then set him in the center of a fucking explosion, you murderer. No, 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 fuck. no, but, I mean, I mean, like, it, there's no reports of arson or anything, so, I mean, what is going on? Why isn't the body, why aren't the bodies in the museum being reported on? Like, like there was a massacre we in the museum. We weren't talking about that. There was Remember no explosion in the museum. Yes, with the handcuffs. What happened but to he stuff? said that the massacre in the museum You were stuck on a topic that was just, like, ten minutes ago. We're, <laughs> we're on another question. Okay. Yeah, the artifacts what happened to Axel's important. handcuffs? Fuck they, it, I don't care. The damage to the artifacts of historical and cultural importance has not been covered. The news hasn't said anything about it. That's true. We, I mean, to be fair, like... Like, that's actually additional information to what the players and the audience know about this adventure thus far. In Levi, the aftermath, that hasn't been mentioned. Levi did... So, like basically he was operating off of memory but he doesn't know enough about ancient artifacts because he deals with antiques which are like only 100 years old instead of thousands of years old so he didn't he doesn't know enough about <laughs> <ancient> <laughs> artifacts yeah. as soon as they walk in the museum and saw the bodies they turn around and said nope yeah no, the, 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 the cops were, the cops were easily destroyed it was an entire gas station going up can, can, can gas station explosions melt steel garters oh <laughs> What does 9-11 tell you? What does 9-11 tell you? Let's run with the fact. Handcuffs. Um, or was it? <laughs> that's, been a, that's been a topic since that event actually happened. It's like, uh, wait, what about the cuffs? What about the cuffs? Like, <laughs> what about the cuffs? We presu- need handcuffs. Presumably destroyed. Look. But no. Axel <laughs> has this? more cuffs, okay? Well, it's not a, it's not a question He's of a supply. He's a cop. He can it's get his question, hands on spares. It's not, a, it's not a question of supply. It's a question of the idea that a, a cop's cuffs are traceable to that cop. Like, they're identifiable. Really? Uh, I did not so know that, actually. Leaving behind in the scene of a... a like, that's, that, that could be traceable to Axel. Uh, I, I did not know that cuffs were traceable. I mean, it makes sense that they were, but I didn't. Yeah, okay, so uh, so that is uh, that's gonna be our broadcast for today. Next week, four p.m. Saturday, we're gonna start the next adventure. All right, and I am actually going to spoil the name of the next adventure. I apologize to all of you that the we next, didn't actually the next play adventure that much. is going to be a it's gonna be a two word title. It's going to be entitled Fort Itude. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Oh, uh, it's water. Uh, it, it, it's going to be entitled... Yeah, type that shit out. Although it's clearly about fortitude, but whatever. Where is it? Where'd you type it? I typed it in the... Where'd in you the type roll, it, you roll motherfucker? 20. Roll 20! Why'd you type it there? Because that way it's on screen. And it syncs it was up... Gonna... With... That way, oh, that way oh, you no, and the no. audience find out at the same time. Oh, okay, no, that's... Yeah, okay, that's what it's about. So basically, we're going to come up against the Unstoppables. Oh. So wait, we're going up, so you are bringing back the indiscriminate racial <laughs> All right, so that's, uh, yeah, no, Dojo's on point. Like, it is entitled Fort Itude. There's going to be a fort. There's gonna, we're dealing with army men. Uh, they're going to be little green plastic dudes, and I'm going to have to identify with them because we're both green. All right, so... You want to find out what happens next? We're going to be exploring a lot of those cool cosmological secrets that explain some of these powers. Note, not you're not going to get a whole picture. I don't get your hopes oh. up. You will never know everything. You never know everything in the world of darkness, and I really love that. There will always be more questions, but some of the questions you have now will be answered, and there will be information that will help fill out your understanding of the plot, the story, and the world. It's going to be really good stuff. Before we start next week... We have to spend XP, remember? Yes. Next next week, we're going to start. We're going to spend XP. We're going to buy some stuff. There's going to be some mechanics Hold up. changes. We got more XP to spend? No. You've oh. already spent yours. Damn it. Um. So, it's not even being the Hulk. I mean, Kermit. <laughs> hey, it's right, not easy so, being either. Uh, so, hey, uh, I'm Kermit oh, the Frog here. Does this, does, this, does this work? Is this set? Matt, give me a shout out for yourself. Hey, I'm MRM Dubois. You can find me on Twitter, and that's really the only interesting thing to hear about me. Anyways, go ahead and go on to the next person. <laughs> <laughs> there you 
you go, Optical. It's all you, baby. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Optical. Uh, you guys can catch me on Twitter at twitter.com slash optical. You can also catch me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash optical. Um, and tonight, we're actually, I uh, just flipped my schedule. We're doing nights now. Uh, most of the week, we're doing 7 p.m. until whenever. Um, and then tonight, we're actually going to be running at 8 p.m. So here in about an hour, we'll be kicking it on live, going back into new er, Fallout 3. So we got some Fallout 3. We got a lot of Fallout going on. A lot of Fallout. A lot of Fallout. You should check it out. And ignore the YouTube. All right. And uh, and then, boom. I'm Evil Squeegee. You can catch me on Twitter at Evil Squeegee. You can catch me on YouTube at Evil Squeegee. Rock. You can catch me on Twitch right here. As a matter of fact, if you're seeing this, then you're either on my YouTube channel or my Twitch channel. And so you know where to find me. Click the link. Be a man or a woman. Do the right thing. All right. Uh, I play Final Fantasy XIV every morning in the weekdays, and weekends are now dedicated mostly to uh, role-playing stuff. Uh, I'm thinking about doing maybe like Quiplash or like viewer interaction games on Sunday mornings now. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, you can catch Dungeons and Dragons on Friday mornings, and you can catch uh, Darkness Rising, the show here at 4 p.m. EST on Saturdays. Uh, and I'll take this opportunity to talk about the nerd community one last time. Fight mark alert nerd. All right. Uh, there's uh, there is that 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 last bit of uh, whoa. That's not right. What? What? Uh, what's not right? That's not right at all. This is right. What happened? Uh, so uh, you can catch us there. Look forward to it. We'll have the nerd talk show. Not this Monday, but next Monday on this channel at 4 p.m. EST. You'll notice that if it's not a morning broadcast, it always starts at 4 p.m. EST. Anybody else notice that pattern, right? I'm trying really Man, hard I, with that I pattern. I hope I can make I hope, that. I hope people notice that. Well, then you'll have to fucking watch it on YouTube now, won't you, dipshit? Uh, I meant I hope I can make it to participate. All right, so, uh, there's, uh, there's that. And uh, because you guys have been fucking awesome this week, all right, this is for you. That, that was like don't ever do phone. that again. <laughs> don't, don't ever do that again. All right, just, just, just stop. All right, guys, we're gonna. <laughs> For a second, Mr. Amduwal was both Levi and Tanya. <laughs> That's not right. That's not right. <laughs> That's not right. <sighs> no! Yeah, that's right. Jack developed a crush on Levi. And he didn't even know it. Because they were the what? same person for a short time. No. Yeah. You resolution! No. Ha! Lucky Hulk! <laughs> Lucky Hulk? Yeah, can you imagine that? Like that seven combat dice with eight again or road action? Holy shit. Man, I'd be fucking baller as hell. I wouldn't even be scared. I would just be like, roll up and like, boom! Okay, it's dead. Point me at the next mushroom for you, person. Mushroom? And every card Mario. is completely total. Why are you a, a killing mushrooms in this hypothetical? Where the fuck I don't know. Maybe you think of Mario all of a sudden. All I do is one hit where I jump Why on Why are you die. thinking of me? You're Mario? That's actually his name, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because optical. It's got a crush on you. No. Don't well, I, tell now, is it on me or is it on you? Don't panic, oh, right? Hey, buddy, you want my number? Think he, think he push you would be horrifying. <laughs> he's almost there, really. I mean, he just got a pushy more his thinky. What? The English just happened. <laughs> what? <laughs> think he put the ability to send out waves of thoughts of fear? What makes you think think he can't that do that already, Dojel? All right, so guys, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go to. Uh, I'm gonna go over here to uh, to I think. Let me check to see if they're live. We're gonna run a small raid. Uh, there's not a whole ton of you stick around past the uh, past the end scene here. I think they are in fact there live. There's yeah, more they... than when we started though, so I take that as a good sign. All right, so what we're gonna do here? All right, I'm gonna drop you guys on a fellow, on a uh, a, a, a fellow. Um, so we got. A fellow a nerd content creator, so if you're in the mood for more role-playing stuff, you can catch it here. Alright, here's what I, I am going to spam a link 
in chat, you guys are gonna follow that link and spam that chat with scrub a dub. Scrub a dub. Are you ready for the scrub train? Scrub a dub. It's a very clean train. Until the angels do not get on. Okay, they are in fact live. All right. Scrub plane ready. No, not scrub plane, Dodal. Scrub train, you know. 